as you're walking back to the stage, you see the Count now shouting at some of his men, I don't care! I don't care! You find me the sergeant now! I can't believe that fool of a woman got herself killed. I'll look uh, towards Poppy. Well, if Fenthwick didn't, like, use his ring or whatever, he would have, uh, he wouldn't be saying that, would he? Poppy kind of shrugs. Oh, I told the guys with the waters or the drinks on the trays to bring you something sweet and yummy. Figured you'd, you'd like that. Yay, thanks. You find a way into my house right now. Where's uh, where's the uh, where's the um, account anyways? By the stage, yes. Currently screaming and screeching at uh, uh, some of his guards, and there are more guards now that have uh, they've made their way. I'll go ahead and go his direction. Okay. Yeah, I'll walk with Poppy. Can I, um, while they're heading towards the stage, check out one of the assassins, particularly this this one in the blue? Uh, give me an investigation check. Investigation. I'm looking for, in particular, again, just clues to who they're connected with or uh, if we can connect them to the dirge. Let's see. Investigation. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and then as, as as I'm walking to this stage with Halbar, I make sure I put all my uh, all my weapons away and like clean up my dress, etc, etc. Okay, yeah, I think you have two daggers, yeah. yeah. You're the only one who came in with weapons. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Enil, you do actually find uh, a pouch out in the open, um, just tied to her belt. Okay, I'm going to pocket it for right now and then head to the stage with everybody else. When we left off, wasn't the prelate harassing us? Yes, uh, I, I do re- kind of remember that. She's just kind of asking um, who you guys are, and she's just following behind for now. Well, I'll have my answers eventually, I assume. You did seem to help quite a bit, so maybe once this ruckus dies down, we can have a bit more of a conversation. Helped quite a bit. And I point to Fenthwick. He actually, I don't know what it's called, but your man was down and bleeding, and he actually... Down and bleeding? He was was stone cold dead. (laughs) That's that's for, it. for half a minute. Yes, that is interesting. I I assumed you more of a man of arcane nature than of the divine arts. Uh, I have friends in low places. She looks at you curiously. You all, who are you people? As the count finally turns and notices you all standing there. Perhaps this is a conversation we should have in a more private location. Damn it, where is that sergeant? Meriden! Meriden! And then a uh, younger looking human male comes running up. Uh, y- 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 yes, my lord. Well, you seem to be in luck tonight, Meriden. You've promoted now. You're the captain of my guard. See to it that we inside my manor at once. These people are to be admitted as well. I'd like to grab one of the guards that aren't the captain standing around. Just tell him, uh, come with us. Pull on his shoulder and yank him towards the, the gate where we left all our shit, all our stuff. Go pick up everybody's stuff and bring it back. Oh, I will, I will follow behind them and then <laughs> try and retrieve my staff. Uh, the count, um, what, what, what is it? What is it? What do you need? I've, I've walked off dragging the guard along with me so he could tell them to give us our stuff. The gate guards. You two, follow them. Make sure they're not leaving. Two more guards follow behind you. And, uh, I mean, if they'll let me walk all the way to the gate stuff, point out everybody's belongings and say, I need all that stuff. Tell them, and I'll point at the guards that followed us. As you guys are making your way past the, uh, kind of foyer entrance, uh, house back through the pathway towards the outer gates you see smoke black smoke encircling the wall you hear distant shouts of men does it sound like combat or like people hurt or make a perception check oh not bad 16 
16, you hear kind of muffled yells, which seems like, Hey! Hey! Hey, the green! And then you hear far off, like, screams and shouts of pain, and you, every once in a while you hear, <laughs> as a, you, you see a flash, smoke and fire, erupt beyond the walls for a moment. Belladin uh, taps Hal on the shoulder and says, it kind of sounds like we're still under attack. Should we really? We need to get our stuff, get back into the house, make sure everything's boarded and locked up and then set a guard out front. Oh, okay. I can uh, whatever I can. Are, are they just letting us grab our stuff? Um, as you guys walk back up, you see now there are men like holding the outer gate, like barricades you see running around and you see men atop the, the, the wall as well, running back and forth. Some younger men seeming to be shouldering like multiple quivers of arrows running back and forth, supplying archers along the wall. And as you approach, you see one of the other guards, Dorian, were you sent to, as reinforcements? I'm speaking to uh, the guard that you're dragging with you. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not. They, these people here, um, they need their weapons. This seems bad, Hal. Yeah, let's just grab our stuff and our friend's stuff and head back. They have to get through here before they get to the main or proper. Maybe the Duke or the Count or the Baron knows what's going on. Okay. Okay. I, I look at the guards. I'm like, well, don't mind me. I'm just going to pray to my god again and just kind of nonchalantly walks over to the tree and then puts his hand on the he, whisper. The tree is outside the main gate. Oh, it's out. I thought it was inside. I thought there was a patch of gas inside the main gates. You guys were uh, you guys were the weapons were taken at the outer gates. So we you guys did walk you guys have walked through that pathway now and are at the outer gates main gate. Okay. I, 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 I figured there was inside the main gates where the grass was. Okay. Well, Belvedin is unhappy. Okay. Did you say there was like yelling and fighting going on right outside? Let's grab our stuff and go. Uh, Belvedin, maybe you can help me carry Fenthwick's uh, yep. armor. Yeah, I, I put on my wooden breastplate and and uh, attach my wooden shield to my uh, my belt and then grab a bunch of stuff and, and start carrying it back. Oh, crap. I have the bag of holding in this game, too, don't I? <laughs> you were the treasurer. All right. So, yeah, you guys get they, all your stuff back, except for Beladin staff, which is should be still outside hopefully it's just a tree guys don't cut it down to make a battering ram please and then we'll uh kind of jog back make haste back towards the keep so yeah you guys make your way back to the keep now it seems that some of the guards are cut have been ordered to kind of organize some of the the party goers they're now just kind of sitting around either on the ground which some of them look very unaccustomed to. Some of the more finely dressed ones have been given chairs and cushions and things, but it seems like no one's, no one is leaving. And as you make your way back towards, you see that they have been able to get the doors open now from inside the manor. That's where most of the guards now have come from, as most of the guards that were in the courtyard originally ran towards the gates and during when the explosions first started. On my way back, do I, can I go by the tent and find some like fruit and melons and some spritzer water and, or at least ask them to make me something fruity so I can give the poppy? Give me a perception check. 15. Um, easy enough. Like, so there was the, the tent specifically for desserts, which had all kinds of desserts. Some you're familiar with, some you're not so familiar with. And as you enter into the tent, you see uh, the corner of your eye, uh, a scurried figure rush out the back of the tent. Uh, looks, look dressed. It seems to be a person dressed as uh, one of the servants. As I'm coming, so as I'm coming up, they kind of go out the back of the tent, like underneath it to go into the back. 
No, there's like there's a there's like a, a server's like kind of oh, flat, gotcha. you know, in the back. And like they gotcha. they saw you come in mm -hmm. and are scared shitless of you and ran away. Fair enough. Twisty breath. Twisty breath. And I'll say loud <clears throat> through my throat and kind of wipe the blood on my shirt. I need something sweet and yummy right now. And one of the older servants comes in. He's a little more poisoned. You can still see, like, you know, he his clothes are a little more sweat stained. There's dirt from where he might have been cowering. But his now that the immediate danger around, he's gained his composure again. And his pride won't let him have less than substandard service for his lord's guest. So he, of course, my lord, here you are. Here we have some sweet cream, some exotic fruits once again from the Isles of Mahar. Uh, I believe it's uh, Rem Rembu Remboten Remboten. I believe. Uh, I'm not. I've never had it myself, my lord. But I've told you it's quite nice. Of course, you have a selection of sweet cakes and tarts, uh, along with uh, different sweetbreads. Um, and he's just making you a plate and, give, and he gives it to you. And uh, how about some wine? And where are your wine glasses? Uh, I will try to find some, my lord, that are still intact. Uh, where uh, where can I find you and your company? We'll be meeting with the Baron, the Duke, or the Count. Uh, They're all the same Count, guy, I think. I, I highly doubt that, my lord. Um, the Count Linnaeus, uh, if you are indeed meeting him in the manor, uh, I will will be sure that uh, wine is sent. Well, wine was available there already. You will be taken care of shortly. I'll look around for any bottles of wine. Okay. Yeah, there are uh, out there probably. Um, there's the 15. You probably find like a bottle with like its neck broken off, but like it's still like half the bottle of wine in there. Perfect. I'll grab that in a, in a glass along with... Uh, Treats for Poppy and just head back in towards the, the main keep. You guys make your way into the hall. You are brought in to the main hall. It's surprisingly barren. Large stone walls, stone floors, some stone pillars, beautiful windows, but not much decor other than some oddly places, although they're not, sh not really sh sure where to put them. Large portraits of apparently the Count in various heroic deeds and poses. Uh, dotted with various taxidermied creatures and pelts. All looks kind of oddly, at, like I said, oddly out of place like it's not really found its proper place yet. <laughs> I'm sure that compares well to the image of him in your head of him crying like a girl and running away from Belladin in his beast form. <laughs> You're saying the feng shui is just totally off. Yes, completely. <laughs> and I'll uh, give Poppy the, the sweets and then take the glass and kind of pour it at the half-broken bottle and give it to the Blue Nightingale. And then I'll look at Fenthwick and, and say, uh, we went to get your stuff and I'll start passing out everybody's stuff. But it sounds like they're sieging the outer walls. I'm not sure if... Who, who is they? I don't know. Fires, smoke, and screaming and hollering. And when we got there, the guard, gate guard said, did you bring reinforcements? And I said, we're here to get our stuff. And we got our stuff and came back. But yeah, there's uh, look, somebody looking like they're going to try to break in or at least more than one or two people fighting outside the gates. Well, the Count really knows how to throw a party. So it's a, it's a, it's a rager. Those people don't have any tickets. As you guys are approaching, you see there is kind of one large chair, not quite a throne, but a large chair. Uh, seems to match the stone masonry around it. However, it's wooden platform that it has been placed on um, and stairs leading up to it seem to be new as well. And there is sitting the Count, arms folded, legs crossed, talking to uh, two armed guards, a little more finely armed than the regular guards you've seen. I happily munch on my snacks as I listen in. 
They are delicious. A little sweet for you. Um, you're not used to like things having like this much sugar in them. It's because it's weight. It's pretty expensive, but they're pretty good. Would you like? Uh, I'll look at Fenthwick as we're having this conversation. Do you want to tell him what's going on? I mean, apart from you bringing him back to life. I'm not sure if he has people. He expected people to be here to do that. I mean, I can do it too, but and I look at the broken bottle in my hand, but I'm not sure that'll go over well. Yeah, I can I can chat with him. Sure. Just between all of us, I, I assume no one can hear us talking. Um, no, you guys are. It's a it's a little. You guys are kind of in the, walking towards them, and um, you guys are keeping like a quieter tone. So yeah. So I'm just saying, just let's let's not bring up the key of Ambrosius. The fact that we have it. Let's let that be our little secret for the time being. What's the key of Ambrosius? It's the, it's the thing we went out in the swamp and found inside the mm. puzzle box. The thing that my familiar is watching over out in the forest. And, and almost forgot I, about I it. Think, yeah, and I think we have something else in it right in the box. Well, the box we gave to... What's his face? At the... Get the gesture's coin, and they ran. They ran off with it. Oh, I forget. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you I'm replaced sorry. it. You put something fake in there. Yeah, I forget what we actually, what we finally settled on putting into the box. Signet ring. Somebody in yeah. the Sunless Citadel. Oh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as you guys approach, you see, like I said, the count. Um, and you now notice to the um, to the side of him is a well dressed older human male, gray hair. Fine clothes, but a little more simple, less flashy. Um, standing at attention at his side, and the prelate kind of standing off to the side as well, arms crossed, just kind of watching the whole ordeal. And he, the count puts his hand up and, yes, yes, uh, I'll get the report in a moment. I want to hear what these people have to say. Well, it seems that we had some party crashers tonight. Uh, well, at least... You were part of them, I suppose. Uh, my men here tell me that you uh, helped defend from this foul assassination attempt. We did. By the way, your security could do some work. I'm not sure it was an attempt because they succeeded, and my yeah, man it's more here like a success reversed what they did. Is that so? And his eyes narrow two men who got it. Um, <clears throat> yes, it seems that some, some strict measures will have to be taken. But I'm curious why you crashed my party in the first place. Why are you well, here? Who are you? Well, I and my two of my companions here are, are uh, members of Eye of the Eye of the Storm. And uh, our other two companions are, well, we they're just kind of with us. They're helping us. Mercenaries. Wonderful. And how did you know of this attack? How... You, this, your timing seemed to be quite fortuitous. That was Anil knew about that. Right? I had a lead. And who is Anil? Or... Yeah, uh, yes. I come by. Uh... Grab Anil. Dra 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 drag, drag him to the front. Drag. Speak up, woman. I've had a... Quite a hard night. I don't feel like straining my ears. My eyes hone in on him, and I, I give. I usually don't have an expression on my face, but this time I'm just like the nerve of this guy. I look right, like I looking through him, and I just look at him and I say, um, "I know of one of the assassins." And then um, I pull out the pot, the pouch that I found. I never really looked at it, but I pull it out. This was on one of them. Well, what is it? I throw it at him. Doesn't make an attempt to catch it, but kind of like does that kind of like, ooh. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for that. You tell me. Hmm. Elric and the old, my lord opens up. He seems to open up the pouch pull out a couple of its contents, you see, um, uh, give me perception checks, everybody. There it is. Poppy and Enil, Enil especially because your eyes are honed and trained on this right at the moment, you see 
a flash of s silver metal, but of the, it's it's kind of brilliance is far more than what you'd expect in this kind of inner kind of uh, light. Even even in the chamber, you know. But then it's not like a daylight. There are sconces and a couple of fire pits that give light and warmth to the to the hall. But you you see this brilliant flash. You know what you notice is that they don't appear to be coins. They appear to be bars of metal. Bars um, of metal. And you see him take out a let uh, a rolled up piece of parchment as well. He unfurls it, and gives it oh, once over, and and, and bends down and whispers into the Count's ear. Speak, what is it? Are you sure? I uh, hear my lord. Hmm. Not much. I'm not sure what you thought. Uh, a couple bars of silver, apparently, and a blank piece of parchment were supposed to prove to me. They obviously were targeting you. You must know something. <laughs> of course they're targeting me. I'm a count of House Roldan. And I assure you, when my cousin hears of this, and who is responsible, <laughs> they will feel the full wrath of the royal family. Well, uh, if that's more than an hour from now, there's a whole bunch of people Trying to break into your outer wall. Yes, Nas. Now, what were you saying, Commander Iron? Uh, yeah, yes, my lord. As you see, um, Belladin, you recognize this as the one of the armed men who spoke to the Count right before the performance happened with the Blue Nightingale, before, mm. right before the. Um, Explosions went off. Who hurried off to the outer gates? Yes, my lord. As uh, I had reported earlier, there seemed to be um, some uprising from the the common folk the, uh, here in the city. At first, uh, they uh, laid a mob attacked the outer gates. We were able throwing rocks, homemade spears, bottles of flaming alcohol, and such. Uh, we were able to repel them, but they persisted for quite some time. However, uh, shortly after, they did uh, retreat, and as we prepared to make our advance and uh, bring order back to the city, we were attacked again. I'm not sure. Um, I've never seen such creatures. Um, the mob or whoever else seemed to have prepared and dug a trench and filled it with some sort of oil um, and surrounded the manor, my lord. Um, since any then any attempt for any messengers to get to other parts of the city uh, have been met with a hail of arrows from beyond the smoke. You're telling me that my home is under siege by some riffraff peasantry? At, at, at first, my lord, I'm... I, I cannot say what is happening in the city now. Are we able to get any word out? I did send some messengers, um, my lord, I'm not sure how far they made it. We did receive word. Some of Commander Greybreak's men from the Stone Pits uh, reported that they were under siege as well. This is a nightmare. Here less than a month and already chaos. Elric, what am I going to do? Lauren, why are you under siege? Um, she dangles her feet off the whatever chair she's sitting and she's eating her snacks. I assume that whoever made attempts on my life... Succeeded. <clears throat> we all say that simultaneously. Yeah, we, all, we all say that, <laughs> yes. Succeeded, exactly. Um, yes, well, obviously this is an attack on House Roldan and His Majesty himself. What else would, for the reason would it be? You still haven't said who. I don't know who. You're the ones with the information, apparently. You're the one who said you knew one of these would-be assassins. How can I know if I can trust you all? What if I know, don't, how do I know this is all in some elaborate attempt? Uh, by the way, you owe my man here 300 
gold pieces worth of diamonds, or is it 500? I think it was 500. No, 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 it's 300. 300 and a spell. We could have left you dead. (laughs) Yeah, we we just did you a very expensive favor, without which we would not be having this charming conversation. You're welcome. This is how things are done in the North. Payment expected from citizenry upholding their duty and honor to protect their lords. I'm not your citizen. And you could have stayed there. Oh. Yeah, Poppy, take a note. The Count says he doesn't want us to bring him back if he gets killed again. Yeah. Yeah. We could take care of that. We could take care of that again. Elric, take an inventory. See what compensation can be given. Of course, my lord. Should probably add us helping defend your walls, which it sounds like you need help with. My men, I'm sure, will be able to hold off. Uh, yes, uh, there doesn't appear to be any direct attacks at the moment, my lord. It's other than the occasional some sort of explosive siege weapon, I'm not sure. But um, other than that, occasionally there's no direct attacks on the walls at the moment. They're just preventing anyone from leaving. Insight check. Do I believe him? Give me an insight check. check. May I do a check as well? I'm watching all this. Yeah, anyone who wants to, you guys are all part of this conversation. Awesome. Yes, please. Mm. Fentwick, you're just pissed off and thinking about the money of your spells right now and just <laughs> just staring daggers at, at the count. And, you know, you're trying to pay attention to um, this this watch commander. And the rest of you, he seems pretty nervous, fatigued. Um, you, you do notice that his armor is not pristine, right? You know, um, Belladin, you would notice this, especially compared to earlier in the night. It seems like he wasn't just there at the walls giving orders. He was, the was in, he was defending. And you get the sense that he's, Belladin, you get the sense he's telling the absolute truth right now of, as he knows it. <laughs> and you get the sense that he, and because you rolled so high, you get the sense that, um, this man is not part of, isn't wearing the liver, the heraldry and liver of uh, the Count's personal guard, but he is more of the kind of general city um, garrison commander. And while there is, you can tell that there is a slight disdain for the Count, he is quite nervous about the parent failure, and he's more worried for his men. I'm going to speak up and say, well, if that's true in there, look, I don't, I don't know a lot about cities, but I know about defending an area and keeping it safe. And from what I can tell, walls are designed to keep things out, right? But they're using them to keep us in. What's, what reason would they have to do that? Quite insightful for someone wearing a, is that wood? <laughs> yes, it's, yes, it's wood. What? Uh, Ah, sorry. It's been, it's been a night. Um, that that is true, my lord. Um, this this siege, um, while effective at the moment, word is a sure to reach, if not his Majesty first. Uh, uh, if not his Majesty, uh, definitely General Tarlin in Fort Beleg. Uh, I was did like I mentioned. Um, a few of my men were able to to both the stone pits before I was made aware that um, Warden uh, Greybreak was also under siege there, and also to General Tarlick at Fort Belek. Um, it's only a matter of time before reinforcements come. Well, well the implication was clear that by besieging you here, they're keeping you inside your walls. Who knows what they're doing in the rest of the city? Well, if they, if these people want to burn down their own city, then why should I care? We are safe here. I am assured, right, Commander, that we will remain safe here. Do we have enough food? We have plenty. I, my tastes are not accustomed to this northern fare. I... I make sure to stock my pantries with some real food. 
the blue nightingale. Hmm? And this kind of demeanor changes a little bit. What are you doing mixed up on all this, my dear? Why are you with company? Hmm? Uh, um, and she kind of she takes a step, like, half behind you, Halbar. Murden, yes? Who was it you said that you saw fighting these fellows and then leaving? That would be, um, Ulian Moore, my lord, uh, the proprietor of the Jester's Coin. Proprietor of the Jester's Coin? And your employer, is he not, my little nightingale? He, he, he is, he, he was, my lord. And how do I know that she is not a part of this? Anyone? Well, she did help us sneak in. So there's that. Oh, oh, we're talking about her now. Okay, sorry. I'm having so many fucking people here. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, she, they, they were trying to kill her too. Um, that may not have been obvious to you. You were dead at the time, but um, they were definitely trying to kill her. Mm. That's why she's behind Hal, because Hal saved her life. Maybe you should get behind Frenthwick. I mean, only fitting, right? Is that a short joke? Maybe. (laughs) Well, I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Well, the proprietors of the Jester's Coin are definitely wrapped up with the rebels in some way. Earlier this evening, when we uh, returned on an errand for them, they tried to kill us. You were working with them as well? We were working undercover, posing as rebels, trying to figure out what they were up to. By the way, do you, you know Sir Giles Nestle Rock? I am aware of the name, yes. he's. For, for some reason, they were interested in stealing his signet ring, doing something with it, and then replacing it before he realized it was missing. Mm. I'm afraid uh, they, may have, they, they did that, and we don't know what they did with the ring. But I'm going to assume nothing good. Sir Giles should be in attendance at this party. Find him. Bring him here immediately. Of course, my lord. Uh, And he goes and calls out, like, signals over for one of his men. And goes and tells him to find Sir Giles. And the, uh, uh, yes, sir, uh, what, what does, what, what does he, I said, go now, damn it. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And he runs off. Now. Yeah. What should I do? What should I do? This is quite the predicament. I do owe you quite a debt for defending my home, but this seems to be a, a matter of of kingdom, of the kingdom now. If this is truly an attack on my house and his majesty, then I owe it to my cousin to find out the truth in this matter. Elric, where is uh, Magistrate Faust at the moment? Uh, I, I believe she uh, was not in attendance at the party, my lord. And where was she? She said she had uh, business to attend to with uh, Warden Greybeck, sir. Of course, of course. Well, this seems to be quite the predicament. I need answers and the truth. Uh, legal truth, and my magistrate is besieged in the city prison. What am I to do with you? Pay us, give us potions, and let us go save the day, I guess? I don't know, isn't that what heroes do? And then pay us... Well, no, no, well, let's let's not be too hasty, you know, if you want to reward us. Uh, I've always thought Baron Fentwith Grivenstone had a nice ring to it. Hmm... Indeed, so, you does. got any like loose loose estates lying around? Poppy <laughs> and Fenswick, give me history checks. Yeah, and you both would know this. Poppy with your time Fenswick, kind of your time in the Kingdom of Rhea, kind of reading up on different kingdoms and their hierarchies. You know would know that barons are kind of the titled merc class in Alari. Similar stations to knights. Knights well knights tend to be kind of more royalty, noble bloods, and in kind of hold positions of, you know, governance and administration. 
like I said, barons tend to be more of the upper class merchants that have found titles for themselves. And what would you be the baron of, my dear? Well, I was I was kind of kind of hoping estates and so on would come with that. You see, but I mean, we could start with the baron of saving your life. Yes. But you know, otherwise, large sacks of gold always work for us. Yes. Well, once this your stories are proven in the eyes of His Majesty's courts, uh, then full compensation will be afforded to you until such time you do have my hospitality for saving my life. You may stay the night in the guest rooms here. I do have to ask that she be kept separate under guard as she is known under direct employ of who both you and my guard tell me is bah, at least somehow involved with this attack. He's talking about the Nightingale, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Um, Hal Dor will protect her. Uh, guard her. Hal guard, uh, will guard, guard her. Yes, I'm sure he would. But until such time that her stories can be corroborated... She must be under official guard. Meta, meta question, Richard. Uh, did some of his guard like turn on him, or was this like a wholesale one for second another thing? I don't remember if like he had like some sleeper agents in his uh, in his employ. Uh, no, that you guys saw no guards turn. So what you guys do remember from the attack was that the some of the performers. Similar to the similar features, although not of dress from the from Sid's in the caravan that you had met um, that you hitched a ride to actually to um, the road to Sigod. They're kind of like, you know, doing sword swallowing and fire dancing and all that. And uh, three of them initially attacked the count and Halbar and Poppy, you know, you were there. They made they went to then attack the nightingale and that's when the dirge was trying to make it seem like she was defending the nightingale mm. well i've made my decrees clear uh are you all going to stand here all night i'm going to make my way to my own quarters and wash off this filth elric be sure to see them to their rooms start Captain Murden, be sure that no, nothing a foul is afoot with this one. Want close eyes on her, my lord. And he gets up quite unceremoniously and huffs off. And uh, four of his personal guard follow along with him. Did he leave the contents of the pouch or did he take it with him? Um, he left it with Elric. Elric, okay. I mean, other than a night stay. Uh, well, we can see how much the account values his own life. Yeah. Right? If, uh, well, wow, room and board for an evening. Exactly. That's why I joined, became a mercenary. The wealth. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, well, I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe he comes back with some recompense, but... And I lean into fence, it's kind of a jerk. Maybe uh, that's why people... I've met the man once, something. and I'm already already ready to join the rebels. <laughs> right? Um. If you would excuse my lord, he is used to quite a different life in mm. the capital. Be assured that House Roldan takes its pride and debts quite seriously, and you will be fully recompensated for your troubles here. And you see him kind of motion, and one of the servants, um, a younger, younger half elf girl, come shuffling in. Um, take this down, Delia. How much did you say your expenditures were for the spell? I suppose it was your components. Well, a three hundred uh, gold piece diamond, and the spell itself, which uh, those are not easy to come by. Yes, uh, I'm not. 
too familiar with that uh, prelate Diona. And you see now the uh, dwarven woman. Yes, well, it's not ex- uh, Sorry, she's dwarven. Right, well, it's not exactly studies of my order, but I suppose uh, we don't really have any services. Anyone who can do that type of services at the temple? I suppose 500 well, gold? Do you have a court mage or anything, somebody who serves in that kind of position? Advisor? The Count has not yet appointed a court mage um, since he's been appointed here. There is uh, the Vicar of the Woven Word under Prelate Diona. He's more about theoretical studies than actual. I went Irish there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, he's a little more about his uh, theoretical studies than actual practiced magic. Well, I'm just saying, if you knew anybody uh, getting a peek at some someone's sp- spell book, being able to copy a few, that might make a worthwhile recompensation. Mm. Compensation. Plus the diamond. Yes, plus the diamond. Like I said, it's quite quite curious that uh, an arcane user is able to call upon those divine powers. What would you What did you say your name was? Fenthwick Rivenstone. And Baron, I do have a bit of a, a, a bit of clerical training. Baron, huh? save your life, Fenthwick Rivenstone. Mm-hmm. Look, dear, I appreciate all you've done for this city, but uh, didn't save my life and. Uh, no offense, Delric, but didn't save the life of my count either. Your count? Well, we'll uh, see. Oh, what... you're referring to the old count. Well, I mean, we'll see what this boy proves. See if he's worth his salt. But until then, the Holy Hexed is not under the. How do I say it? Not under the hierarchy of the nobility here. Where. We run our own affairs. And he, she kind of gives a smirking glance towards you, Fenswick. So the diamond, the uh, maybe a peek at a spell book, and then I think maybe those silver bars back would be, replic- uh, you know, good enough before we... And a pony. And a pony. Oh, he wants a pony. <laughs> I was under the impression that these were evidence found on one of the assassins. I thought the paper that clearly probably has invisible ink on it was was the yeah. evidence, and the bar was it, probably just someone being paid payment. for committing yeah. murder. It clearly has invisible ink on it. I mean, why else would he have it? I mean, pretty crappy invisible ink if it's clearly visible. Clearly, as in anyone worth their salt, wouldn't have a blank piece of paper. Like, someone's got to activate it or something. Do you guys not? You know what? I, f- I forget. Outside of the swamp, people don't know about chemicals. Sorry. Ignore me. Well, it didn't. I know uh, he meant. Poppy, well, is, is, Poppy is nodding the entire time, but she's really only nodding because she heard the word pony. <laughs> <laughs> Two ponies. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I promise you the house roll down will see you compensated. This is evidence, and even then, I do not think that uh, bars of mithril, true silver, would be quite the compensation even for deeds such as this. Damn, Anil just gave away mithril? Holy shit. No, I didn't give it away. You threw it at him. I will take it back. How? Uh, Apparently not. I'm going to take it back. I'll get it back. I, I, I'm looking forward to those rolls, Oliver. Yes. I mean, you could, we could, uh, you could take it back, but I would not advise uh, carrying around forbidden contraband in the kingdom, as true silver is relegated to official. Uh, not of con- the neutral does not concern me. It's the letter. I told you, I came here for it. A target. The target targeted the Count. What uh, did actually, the letter... Actually, all you told us is that you knew of one of the assassins. Correct. Yeah, you, can, you didn't really tell him a lot. 
the account. Yeah, except you haven't, for the group. Yeah, you haven't shared any information with the count at all, except for that you knew somebody. What is on the letter? It's blank. Oh, I'm asking. I'm asking the guy holding it. He unfurls it and turns it around, and it is blank. You whispered something to the count. I whispered that it was blank and that there are bars of mithril that should not be in the hands of common folk, let alone outsiders to our country. But he responded in turn and said that when the... I forget who he mentioned. When they find out who was in behind this, who is uh, that? That would uh, be... Jordan, uh, Jordan says that, not Belladin. <laughs> <laughs> that would be his reverence his majesty King Jarek of House Rodan third of his name cousin second cousin the count now you can understand why an attack on this house is of such troubling account hmm. and no idea who is targeting the house None. Question. Belladin like raises his hand because he doesn't know how this whole thing works. Uh, oh, Belladin, you don't have to raise your hand. Oh, thank you, thank you, Vimpy. <laughs> um, so far, the only one we have then is is the the owner of the of the arena, the Jester's Coin. Uh, Jester's Coin. Thank you, Vimpy. Do you believe this is a person who is? High, high enough up to be the mastermind in this sort of thing, or do you think he's working for someone? This, I'm, I'm new to this city and how all this works. I mean, is that just the guy we need to go find and kill? How does this work? Unfortunately, I am new to this city as well as we arrived here not a few months ago. Oh, I just got here today. So it's this is this is there's a lot of people here. Hmm. If you say so, you should see the capital. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Thank you. Teach their own. We might uh, have to go there to get our just desserts. And I smile at Poppy. Prelit, Torel, please. You've lived here quite some time. All right, you can say that. Came here as an acolyte, then vicar, now Prelit. So, quite some time. Uh, what do you know of this? Ulian. Well, he's definitely a scoundrel and scum, but I, I wouldn't. Ambitious to boot, but I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have pegged him to put all this up. This is. Well, it seem, to be quite fair, it seems a little bit beyond him. More of a middleman, it seems to me. Mm. Mm. If the Count was to be killed, who would replace him? I suppose. I'm not sure if that's my place to talk of political matters. I'm just trying to figure out their motivation. I mean, if, what if they had succeeded? What would it really gain them? I mean, I suppose somebody else would just be appointed count. Well, also, I think the people outside the walls are under the assumption that maybe they succeeded. Or do you think when uh, Middleman left, he started the siege to make sure we couldn't follow him? Commander? It's, it's possible. I mean, it, it was quite odd there. There was that fervor and attack, but it there were peasants. They had pitchforks and farming equipment and stones. And like I said, the biggest threat were the bottles of alcohol they threw and large casts that exploded. I had no fear that they would break the walls. They were merely letting off some of their frustration, possibly from some of the stricter ordinances that hadn't been passed then something changed they it seemed like almost at once they fell back and my men advanced that's when the trench of oil or whatever substance was lit and we lost sight of them from the wall and the smoke i all we heard were their screams yeah you mentioned a beast that you'd never seen before like here in the city I saw, sh I saw shadows beyond the smoke and cries that I've never heard a human make. There are, there's smoke in different points of the city. I, I couldn't tell what was actually going on there, but the stone pits are definitely under siege as well. 
What, what are the what are the stone pits pits or in the stone pits? I apologize. I forget that you are outsiders to our, our city. The stone pits are the city uh, prisons as as long as as well as the main garrison for the city watch here. I call it the stone pits because it was next it was made from the old quarry, a little ways from the new quarry. Um, on the edge, north, uh, northwestern edges of the city. Anybody uh, important in the stone pits? There's Warden Greybreak and no, the I magistrate mean, in is there. being held there, like prisoners. You said the magistrate and the warden? Or is the warden like the warden of the prison and the magistrate is in prison? The warden is the warden of the prison and the magistrate is the magistrate of the city and was there on business or possibly just avoiding this party. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I speak out of line. This night has been something. Anyone of note being held in the prison? Your normal thugs and ruffians, pickpockets, murders. There was that foul forest fellow that was trying to stir animosity in the... Uh, in the Channel Districts. He was captured not but a few nights ago. You don't think that the, this is all to try to free him, do you? Well, I mean, if we can't get out... Could be. Right? We can't get out there. None of you guys, city guard, the people who are in charge of the, keeping the peace, um, can't get out of here. And it happened also over there. You'd think they were doing it intentionally. That is worrisome. He he was making troubles, like I said, with the poor folk speaking out on the against the false masters and I don't know the untrue blood. I'm not sure. He was he was a rabbling madman when we captured him in the in the quarry, the new quarry, not the old quarry. I mean, he was just. We thought he was just causing trouble among the peasantry. I don't know, Fento, maybe we should take a look at that. I mean, not tonight, it's late. It's yeah, well, I'm, it's a little late. I'm kind of tired. And I didn't even get anything to eat at the ball. And I'll, uh, I'll look around for, like, a goblet or something that's sitting around and find one. Well, and... there's, oh, is, there's no tables, there's nothing in this. It's like the, the, the Count's throne. Is there a vase or a vase? Nope, no All flowers. Right. I'll uh, I'll hand no, I'll hand him the broken you know, bottle. Is, is 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 the body is the party still going on? I the, the guests. I suppose an be. attempted assassination will uh, kind of put a damper on it, but. Um, Poppy holds out her uh, plate of mm -hmm. snacks, whatever's left on it, towards Fenswick. I was thinking something a little more, you know, substantial, but. At this time, you see the, the guard um, that the commander had sent off running back, and you hear him whisper something to the, the city watch commander. Thank God the count has already retired for the evening. Alec, Sir Giles cannot be found. He is not among the guests. That seems like a problem. Quite. Quite. Uh, everyone roll me perception check. Or an insight check. 21? As he's, as he's saying this, um, Poppy, Belladin, and Halbar, you kind of notice him quickly glance and, like, kind of palm the pouch with the mithril in it. Who palmed it? Not He's not, like, palming it. He's, like, kind of, like, you know, kind of, like, fidg fidgeted with it in his hand and gave a quick glance as he was saying, like... Like a nervous tick. Oh. He was... Paid for it. It was him that was paid for it. Are you saying this out loud, or is no? That was like <laughs> in the chat. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. See, I'm standing next to Fentwick. I'm gonna lean down and cut out. I'm gonna go down on one knee and then put my arm over Fentwick and say, "We'll get some food rel relatively quickly." But I think this guy's on the hook for uh, what went down. I think mm -hmm. he's. That's his payment. And I nod towards the. Mithril bars. I, I, I have no clue, and neither does Poppy. 
Uh, I mean, I don't understand. And really, that doesn't pop me. That's what well, I. Oh, we're kind of. Did you say you haven't eaten yet? I will I'm not. sure uh, I'll be fine. I'll I'll just have a big breakfast. The hospitality and reputation of us there, I'm sure, is still plenty of food in the tents and both in the manor. Will be prepared to you, please. This way. What, what was your name again? Erlich Einhammer, advisor to the Count. I just give him one of my piercing looks again, just like I'm just committing it to memory in his face. There is uh, guest rooms in the eastern wing here. Uh, I'm staying so, with the Nightingale. Uh, Not with I'm, her, but you know what I mean. You, what do you Poppy, like? like shakes her head. <laughs> <laughs> what do you if, mean? Uh, his lordship was quite clear that uh, she was to be kept guarded on her own. However, he did not say that you could not guard her as well. If you, if you would rather stay outside of her room, okay, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure I can talk his lordship out of the, such a loophole. I mean, into such a loophole when he finds out in the morning. We'll be long gone uh, by then. Thanks. You'll be gone by the morning. Can I leave the manor? Did you just tell me I couldn't leave the manor? There's a goes, uh-oh. <laughs> wall of fire surrounding it with bombardments of archers and God knows what beyond the smoke. Touch him in something else, friend. And I'll like wipe some more of the blood that's on my sleeve and kind of taste it and wipe it on my pants. Yes. Uh, well, here, there, there's... Uh, a common room for one of for this this wing of the manor uh, where you will be staying. His lordship was brought up in quite in a, an unusual way from most people, but you have my sincerest thanks for your help and saving his life. Does uh, he sound sincere? Thank you. Give me give me an insight check. Twelve. I mean, from what you can tell, yeah, doesn't seem to. Uh, <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be kind of any shifting of his eyes when he's talking or change in his tone, and he's looking at all of you directly, and making eye contact as he's saying this, and to show that, as I said, you, I'll be sure that what you spent in that battle will be paid back to you, at the very minimum, and. While his lordship did say that the Miss Nightingale, Merisol, you can call me Merisol, Merisol, was to be guarded for the night. He never said that she needed to be separated right away. So if you would all mind uh, just waiting here in this common room, I'll make sure that dinner, the rest of dinner, is brought to you. And he guides you along. Um, kind of the east wing of the manor. There's a set, a, a long hallway and a set of rooms, and in between, in the middle of, there's like a set of rooms on one side and then another a break in the hallway, and there's kind of a large common room with chairs and tables and stuff. You got, he takes his leave. There are four guards that stay. They are kind of making sure that no one runs. Okay, yes, we uh, corral her off in the start to chat with her. Okay. I'll just put it out there. Okay. Time to spill. Had a long day. I'm hot. I'm tired. Lots of people have tried to kill me. So I'm no mood. Ulian has kept me as his personal pet for many years now. I bring customers in for my performances. I'm the face of the jester's coin as you would have it. And he uses me as his entry middlewoman when dealing with people he's not sure if he can trust. I never thought I would be able to escape from under. How did you get into that position in the first place? My sister and I 
came to these shores when we were but girls. We come from a kingdom of isles far to the southeast. We were hoping to make a name for ourselves, be entertainers. Uh, life was harder than we imagined. We were young and foolish. William found us when he was traveling. We were tour we were making our way through the various city states of the Kyberius Federation. He was charming at first, kind, and wealthy beyond anything we'd ever seen before. First, it was nice. We were traveled from kingdom to kingdom, city to city, finest of accommodation, food, clothing, travel. And with that, uh, my reputation for my performances grew. And as my, and as Julian, Ulian saw the rising potential, apparently, he changed quickly without warning. I woke one morning and my sister was gone. And he told me that if I didn't do exactly as he said, the next time I saw her, it would be her head only. Did you ever see him talking weird or dealing with devils or demons? How about his little sidekick gnome guy? I mean, we were in the arena before we made our way out here, and uh, he summoned some creatures like I've never seen before. Yes, I I know of that foul little creature's perversions. He relished in it. I never... I don't think anyone knew his real name. That's He called himself Sin. Ulian himself, I've... His interests are of worldly and material power and wealth. I've never seen him show much interest in devilry or... Any idea why they... St- when they, they sent us into the swamp for that box, any idea what they wanted with it? That was payment mm-hmm. to whatever group you were pretending to be. The box was for another client of Ulian's. When his men failed to retrieve it, he saw the opportunity to, when you're not... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm hard to keep it all straight when the people you were pretending to be came with this job. He requ- he requested that retrieval of the box as payment. That way he would get paid by the other client. And that's how most of his dealings are. Oh, so the box was for another client of his. Yes. Like I said, he... He has no care for artifacts in history other than what they might fetch in the market. I mean, now, what are you going to do now that you're free of? I... Uh, it starts to break down. I... I don't know. But have I killed Marigold? Marigold, is that your sister? Yes. What happened to her? I, I don't know. I haven't seen her in years. Just the threat and hope from Ulian that if I kept doing as he said, that we would be reunited one day. But I, I couldn't stand it at, at a minute longer. And when when you all came and you, Halbar, showed your strength, you said you're not who you were saying you were, that you were willing to help me, I... I had to take the chance again, even if it meant my death. Nervously, I mean, I got you a gift. If I can get out of here, I'm supposed to pick it up from the jeweler. And it's a, a puppy kind of picked it out. Um, it says it's a, it's, a, it's a jewelry box or a music box, um, something like that. I mean, perhaps you can take all those memories and stash them away in that box and <laughs> bury it under a swamp somewhere. Um, I don't know. I... Uh, I think we all look to do the right thing, um, and we're we're hoping this is the right thing. We need to we need to find out what Olian was wrapped up in or wrapped up with, and I mean, for everybody's sake, we take him down. Your 
the group that ha that hired Ulian wanted Sir Giles' ring, but not for, to have it stolen completely, and then to arrange the assassination, which apparently included myself as a target as well. Olin, I'm sure, used his contacts from his travels abroad. You, you said you knew one of them, as she uh, looks over towards you, Anil. Cannot say I know her, but she, her face came to me in a, a dream, a, a remembering. Your, there's something about you that reminds me of her. Yes. Kyonzi, you forget that she traveled, she came to the party with uh, Ulian and I. It, uh, something and maybe just, I don't know, the way you stand or hold yourself. I cannot say why that does, but she does draw me, and that's how I found, I guess you would call it a lead to the party, and that's when I ran into this party. I'm confused, though. She was shouting about trying to protect me, and when those other assassins came after me, I'm... I just don't know. I don't know. It's too much. Do I believe her? A few minutes, I check. Uh, the camera, like, pans away from this conversation, and Belladin is walking up to a guard and says, Um, I didn't get a chance to eat in all of the ruckus. Could we get some food brought from the tents and brought here into the hall so we can eat before we go to bed? Uh, Advisor Elric uh, is arranging all that. Food will be brought shortly. <clears throat> oh, all right. Good. Good. Did you happen to see, like, a tree from the northern... No, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. And he goes back and he sits down at a table. The guard is very confused. Enil, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like she's kind of having, like, a breakdown at the moment, so it's kind of hard That's to all that, read that. her... Okay. Yeah, there was a lot we went through, all of us, today. I'm just glad that we are all walking still. Many of them were skilled. I cannot say if she truly was targeting you or saving you. I just know she's a dangerous woman. William's a dangerous man. Sounds like it. And at that time, Elric can be seen leading kind of a host of servants. Uh, yes, that, that table back there looks big enough. Um, he points to the back corner table. Pretty big room. Would you mind if I joined you all for dinner? Plenty of room. I don't see why not. In the chaos, uh, <laughs> I did not eat myself. And you they should, set up. You shouldn't eat yourself. That's cannibalism. Unless it's your elbow skin. <laughs> That, that can keep you warm. No, not even then. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's called survival. <laughs> I make as as the tables being set up, I and and all that. I make sure somebody else takes a bite before I do. Okay. No, before I take any bite, I will. I will spend ten minutes casting detect poison and disease <laughs> <laughs> over all the food. So you guys all sit down, and Elric in there. And then Fenswick starts, like, mm -hmm. praying. He's going to say grace. Uh, mm -hmm. might be a ten-minute a ten minute prayer. <laughs> uh, you see him get kind of like, he's, uh, you know, like at Thanksgiving, where it's yeah. like, Let's yeah, that one in, family yeah. member who's, like, giving thanks for their entire life. <laughs> yes. And you're like, come on, I just want to eat some turkey. But, yeah, eventually you cast your spell. Mm, turkey. And by that, I mean it's free poison. You're all... No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, good thing I have a resistance. <laughs> no, I don't there is... Food is fine. I will go um, sit wherever there's room at the table and pretend to eat or try to eat. I probably start stuffing her face. And so uh, how long have you been... You said you're only here for a month, few months. Where were you before you were here? Uh, you look like you've seen a yeah. few battles here and there. Me, battles. <laughs> Maybe court intrigue, if you can call it battle. I've seen share, but uh, something like tonight, 
I can't say that I've ever seen quite this close before. Is the captain of the guard in the room? No, it's just the four guards at the the yeah. the back end of the, near the hallway. What do you know? What do you know about our good good man, uh, Captain? What was his name again? Um, uh, you mean the new uh, Sergeant? Mer- right? That guy. Yes. That guy. I. Uh, it will take some time to get used to Lady Nigella's absence. What do you mean, Lady Nigella? Who's who's that? Oh, the the yeah. former captain. That's right. I mean, look at Fencewick. Maybe you should uh, use that ring on her, and I'll uh, stuff my mouth with some food, prevent myself from talking. Burden. He's a good man, a little young, but he. With some confidence, I'm sure he'll quite well. He learned as much as he could from Nigella, Lady Nigella. I'm sure he'll make a fine captain of the guard. And Rick, just to let you know that uh, the person who said that was Elric, not Burden. Yeah. When he was looking at the the coin pouch, well, not yep. the coin pouch, but yep. Right. And who are we conversing with right now? Erlich. Erlich, the advisor, the kind of head of household here. Uh, yep. The guy who was in on it, Poppy. <laughs> I, you had questions earlier. About who would, who would, and he kind of leans in, and who would pull his lordship's uh, position if he fell? I'm not one to usually give political dealings with strangers, but you've already proven yourself to me, at least, tonight, yeah. by saving my lord. I mean, if he was dead, what would you go do? Celebrate? I mean, I w- uh, mourn? His his majesty, King Jarek, is, is a, uh, a great ruler, but um, he is quite, quite stern and um, strict, especially when it comes to the of his house. I imagine I would uh, be joining to serve my lord shortly after, if you get my meaning. Oh, shit. Really? Are you here to, like, keep an eye on this guy, or is he, like, the the favored son? Uh, uh, He looks around. Give me a persuasion check. I'm saying it with my mouth full of food as I'm drinking at the same time. Uh, his his lordship is a valued member of House Rodown, um, although a little more removed from the line of succession. Nevertheless, uh, his blood carries, uh, his veins carry the royal blood. So he's here as punishment, and no one wants to deal with him. Uh, he turns bright, he kind of turns a little red at that. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, and he just drinks. <laughs> doesn't say anything. It doesn't, it doesn't acknowledge you even when you say... When Lord Halivar uh, made his intentions known that he would be retiring from his duties, um, his majesty was insistent that uh, Count Linnaeus would be appointed to this, this city as his ruler over the objections uh, of the Duke would normally be in charge of appointing his own liege lords. So uh, I I guess um, if his majesty had no one else that he insisted on being appointed here, uh, Duke Elias would uh, appoint one of his own lords. You mentioned he's only been here for a few months. Um, maybe I've had too much uh, food, but what? And who was here before? Do I? We... Uh, Lord Lord Halivar was the appointed ruler here. Uh, ca- uh, count. Well, I guess he wouldn't be. He's still, still would be count actually. Uh, count Halivar ruled here for many years. He's actually second uncle of Duke Elias, but uh, once Halivar's uh, wife. Lady Anella passed. He was 
he had no interest in public life or duties, it seems. So he's an old, he's he's pretty old guy, uh, you know, infirm, old, needed to retire. I don't think anyone would say Count Halivar is infirmed. He's getting on in his years, but I would, I would feel sorry for the man who called him infirm to his face. Oh, so he was relatively, I mean, in middle years, but still uh, well off, both physically and financially. Yes. Oh, yes, quite. Um, as I said, the after the death of Lady Nella, he seems he lost interest. How did his wife die? I was told natural causes. Um, she was a bit older than him. He'd probably be in his 70s by now. Would the um, would the name Count Calavar or Dugalias come up when I was trying to find a lead? No. Okay. All you all you heard was the the city. Yes, the city. Uh, okay. And like what she might, you know, kind of like. Well, obviously you know what she'd be probably doing here. So. Yeah. Okay. There was some mention that the count had instituted some unpopular measures recently. He'd upset people. His lordship is young. He's not mastered all the subtleties of ruling over people. And as I said, the royal blood flows through his veins. So, so for you to like, give an example, something like he implemented or an issue that has not been popular, like contrast to compare Lord Halivar to this young man. I mean, what would their stances or positions be on some of the more unpopular uh, rules, I guess they would be, that he's instituted? And what would Lord Halivar do had, had he been in power here? He looks back again. His lordship may, uh, merely instituted some policies that any respectable might um, when seeing that there was need in his city, a slight increase in taxes, tariffs on goods both coming in and out of increased demand of production from the quarries. As I said, nothing, nothing that any un unreasonable lord would ask of their people. <clears throat> and he drinks again. Of course, with the um, commotions lately, of course, rumors of unrest in the channel districts being stirred by dubious people. There was even an incident of some sort of attack in the markets not but almost a week ago. The perpetrator apparently of fomenting those hostilities was arrested and thrown in the stone pits awaiting judgment. Uh, who is that? I don't know his name and some forest dwellers from what everyone keeps saying so this was the guy ranting about false masters and untrue blood and so on yes mm. I mean we just got back right what has gone on in a week's time I mean we were only here for a few, few days prior only enough for me to get my belt but after that uh, well, you, we headed out you guys you guys did have a fight in the marketplace with a crazy woman with a bunch of poop. weird poop sigils on her that floated in the air and cast some dick, so, and turned people into some crazy. What has gone on since we were last here? And I'll mention the last time we were here. Um, I mean, you mentioned the, the goings on um, besides the poop lady and the night. What else? I mean, fill us in on what so else you, is going you, on. You, you know of that incident then in the market. That uh, I was muted this entire time because Poppy <laughs> was like, when when he mentioned that, Poppy was actually saying, it's like, yeah, those guys who dealt with her, they did a really good job, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> someone should reward them. His lordship was worried about his party. He was, he is young. He was hoping to meet some of the more eligible young women the area tonight. Um, that's why so he invited so many people, um, and he wanted to make sure that this party went off 
without any disturbances. And so if you were a younger man, like the Count, who would be the eligible young women? Uh, what are their names? How old are they? What are their race? <laughs> are they single? <laughs> I mean, he, he was planning. He was planning a contest where there'd be roses and stuff, and saw selection, and uh, didn't, didn't work out. Yeah, he was gonna have everyone watch. Quite odd. The various baronies around here, city of uh, Dunshire, some of, some of the lesser noble. Most as well, um, Nestle Rock, I suppose. Uh, Sir Giles, there, his daughter. Oh yeah, look the Penswick. I mean, present company excluded. Anyways, you ever been? Uh, well, maybe not you. North of Glacier Pass, Glacier Old, Owen Pass. Uh, this is as far north I've ever been. Um, I grew up in the capital. My family has been advisors and advisors to branches of the house for land for generations. You enjoy it? I mean, you know, I kind of just <laughs> gesture up, you know, whichever way he went to. I mean, <laughs> have you always been stuck with this guy or were you working with uh, Sir Halivar? No, I, I came with the Count Linnaeus. I've been his advisor for some years now. There are worse lives. There are a lot better ones, too. But yeah, yeah, that's not the, not the most ringing endorsement I've ever heard, but okay. And by, and by now you guys have noticed, like, he's, like, been drinking, like, nonstop a lot. Like, <laughs> like, there's been, like, a couple different times where he's called over for carafts of wine. I hope to continue in my duties after I have that chance, thanks to you all. Oh, well, you can thank Benthwick. He, uh, you know, apart from being uh, dashing, dashingly handsome, <laughs> um, he's he's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> I I do like the mustache. I I shouldn't even be saying this, but as you were. It reminded me of when I brought up Sir Giles. Um, as I said, mithril is not an easy substance to come by. Uh, Neil, uh, who did you get the mithril off of? Was it just the random one? I mean, do you think it they was, were all, all paid in mithril? Uh, it was the closest to the assassin, the one in blue. Just... Wait, roll me a history check and arc. History and arcana? History and Arcana, yeah. Good enough. Um, so, ar with that Arcana role, you... R in your studies, Mithril is one of the components in forging magical weapons. Magical items, really. Um, it's one of kind of the required components for high-level enchanting. And you guys... Didn't we find... Months, didn't we just find a couple months ago, were... <laughs> Was it a couple days ago? <laughs> uh, it was a couple months by now. Nestle Rock, where Sir Giles was recently appointed. But didn't we find it in the forge, like by the beholder in the swamp? Where you found you found some mithril there because uh, in the in the elven ruins where the fire, yeah. the forge or whatever. Um, yeah, I was about to say fire forge, but <laughs> <laughs> everything's fire forge. Oh, yeah. But yeah, and but there was also in Nestle Rock that was one of the things that was kind of being kept secret there is that they had recently like discovered a a vein oh, the, the of true silver, that. and that's why Sir that's why Sir Giles was appointed to kind of oversee Nestle Rock. Yes, it's um, the precious metal. Which you know you would, you would have you would have no idea what true silver is. And so I, 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 I look back at the guy and, and say, so what are you going to do with that? Or the, what are you going to do with it? Hold on to it until the magistrate can come and we can have formal proceedings to f see what's going on. And his lordship is satisfied. And then 
be sent to Iliarden to the capital. Do I believe him? Roll an insight check. Fourteen. Fourteen? Yeah. I mean, he's pretty tipsy right now. Did you, um... And, but you don't feel like he's being untruthful towards you? Do you still have the letter? Um, yes. What, it, but it's just a parchment, so there's no letter. <laughs> um, right here. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Interesting. And he takes out the parchment and... Can I take a look at it? Sure. And then this is uh, out of character. Remind me when I threw it at them, who was the one that looked at it and then whispered to Count Linnaeus? Uh, Ehrlich picked it up from the ground where you threw it and like Count Linnaeus kind of like, like did the like, uh, like to get out of his way. (laughs) Yeah. So it was Er Ehrlich that did whisper to, for whatever whispered something to Count Linnaeus. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I just want to make sure it's okay. Uh, as you can see, it's quite blank, which does not help with finding out what's going on, which means there is not closure in sight for this. <clears throat> I examine the... Is it blank? The parchment. It's blank, yeah. Give me an can investigation I... check. Yes. It, it's a blank <laughs> piece of parchment. <laughs> May I? Benthra, um, can't you see probably. things like this? Like, oh, that doesn't make sense to me. I would be blank. Exactly. Mm. The things? You know what I mean. Like, when you did, when you were in the well, runes, you, like, did a little thing, and you looked at, uh, I don't know what you were doing, to be honest. Um, you waved your hands in the air, you made a bunch of noise, and said, yeah, this is good right here. Told me to pull, and that was it. I think he's talking about seeing the weave. Pretty sure. I have no recollection of that which you speak. Is there a candle on the table? Yeah, I was just thinking that, yeah. Is it lit? It is. Yeah, if it's it's chemical-based, it might react to heat. We Poppy, may I? Chemicals in the swamp. Just don't don't touch the flame to the paper. It might destroy it, but near near to it. Can I, well, Poppy? I reach out for the letter and ask if I can. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I hand it to you. And then um, I look to Belladin and I hold it as far away from the candle, which I think are close enough. And then look to him to tell me when to stop. Just don't light it on fire. Do I see anything? Does it reveal anything? Give me a perception check. Natural 20. You see the faint shimmer on, uh, like, the bottom corner, like, the bottom of a small, like, almost circular shape, but it doesn't, nothing appears in the moment in the firelight. But you see kind of, like, as you're, like, putting up to the fire and, like, the light is passing through, you do you notice the kind of barest, like, just because... You rolled that well, you notice it. That there's just kind of this faint shimmer for a brief moment, at, and you you lost it as soon as you saw it, of this small kind of circular shape. Okay. At the bottom, you said? The bottom mm-hmm. of the letter? Mm-hmm. I relay that to the group. I, I could have sworn I seen circular, a circular glint the bottom of the page. Uh, I do not know. Maybe... There's definitely something hidden about this. I mean, maybe it's hidden by magic, Fentwick. And I hand it to Fentwick. Fentwick, you must... Do you know of arcane magics that hide the true nature of something? Hmm. are already drawing a blank on that one. You mean like blank, like blank paper. I mean, I mean, I, I, I you not... Mean. Yes. Gotcha. No, I, I don't know of any magic that would make anything appear. Mm. None that I know of. I mean, maybe after you get the spell or opportunity to look at the spell books, I mean, maybe you have something there. Maybe. Well, then give me a wisdom check. Ouch. Eight. Eight. 
it's yeah, you're not really sure. So it's a blank piece of paper. Um, is there like any other markings on it or is it like a scroll or it's just a paper rolled up? It was just a, a paper rolled up with like like a leather thin leather tie. I'm gonna look to uh Erlrich and Erlich Erdrick and ask. You know, I'll I obviously said it to the group and do you did you find something interesting about this letter or was it the mithril that piqued your interest? Uh, the I mean the mithril piqued my interest first, but you have to admit a blank piece of paper on an assassin with a uh, pouch full of mithril is a little bit interesting. How how so or why do you say that? Why would an assassin be carrying a blank piece of paper? Doesn't make sense to me. Who would pay in Mithril? Who can? You said it's very rare. Yes, that's um, another thing that concerns me a little bit. You all had mentioned something about Sir Giles. I cannot say much more due to secrets of the kingdom and his majesty, but his name is of interest. And the fact that he is missing, the Count will not be happy. Add to the list of things I'm sure he will not be happy about in the morning. Wait till he tries to do something and he realizes he's got a minus three on skill checks. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> minus four. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe he shouldn't be shaving. Ooh. <laughs> he definitely has someone to shave him. He's a dick. Now, I fear I've said far too much than what is proper for a man of my station. I have uh, fear to be far too much into my cups as well. <clears throat> but who knows what the morrow will bring, right? So right. enjoy it while we can. Exactly. Well, you, get to, you get to keep uh, your head because you're... Uh, you're the person you're babysitting still alive <laughs> <laughs> until the morrow then just in case you forgot <laughs> um i apologize i will not be able to sh show you into your rooms myself but um the house staff take care of you i'm gonna uh, pock i'm gonna pocket the letter hopefully he doesn't know it give me a slight of hand check god damn it an advantage because he's drunk. I love whenever Oliver is asked to play in D&D, &D, he goes, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Sleight of hand? Oh, Sleight of actually, hand with, adva is, with advantage. This is pretty good. I have a chance. Hold on. You're a monk. This is your shit. Damn. Yeah, he is too drunk to notice. Awesome. That's what I wanted back. So he gets up, stumbles, and one of the uh, other kind of house stuff helps him and he leaves the common room. Beladin's going to lean in and say, look, I'm not really good at people. Uh, well, I'm good at persons. Is that I'm good at I'm good at individual people. And um, I'm getting the feeling that nobody likes the count that we revived. Well, Finn, Finn, look, you you revived. That's before he got to know him. You are correct, Beladin. Nobody likes him. Yes, your your insight is truly stunning. <laughs> you are great people. Beladin Bel smiles and gives you a, 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 a clear indication that he did not detect your sarcasm at all. <laughs> and you I meant it like this it. truly dizzying. Yes. And I truly meant it. I said it truly like a, I believed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because it's what I know you need. <laughs> You just want your tree. I know you want your tree. I want my staff back. I know you do. I know you do. So, uh, what's next? Sleep. Rest would be good. I'm mentally exhausted. I agree. But we are free. Totally are the soldiers still there guarding us? Uh, they're at the end of the hallway. They're more for uh, Metasol, Blue Nightingale. Metasol, okay. Oh, we're free to leave. Got it. I mean, it's just if you guys can get... If there's a siege. Yeah. Like it's not like you. Guys. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. All of you are forgetting that we are surrounded by a wall of fire. <laughs> I mean, it's D and D though. So. The wall of fire is that out? Is that outside? 
outside outside, outside the the, uh, the outer gates. Yeah. Past past the tree. Yes. Yeah. Remember we went through a okay. courtyard of some so, sort. If you want, I'll go get your. Staff. Yeah, I was gonna offer me Poppy and I can go, but it's a tree. How does that work? I mean, no, I can I can go with you. I, the three of us, I think, can can sneak out. We should probably rest a bit. Um, I'm somewhat okay. I'm I'm fine, but maybe <laughs> after a short rest for you to do feel yeah. better. Ha- yes. Halbar. Ha- Halbar. Ha- yes. I I I do not mind staying here as it takes for whatever proceedings or whatever this count needs of me to prove my story. I have nothing to hide. Will Ulian be left to his devices? Will he be allowed to get away with this? I mean, that remains to be seen. If I see him again, I'm taking him down, but where would he, where could have you gone? Where Where is he now? I'm, uh, I'd assume back to his, his, his area of strength, the Jester's coin. From there, I do not know. Never traveled with him to his summer cottage or anything like that? When we were traveling, it was all staying with con- connections or fancy taverns. Um, he never brought me anywhere personal until he brought me to the Jester's coin. He's always said that that he built that from nothing. I'm sure, I don't know. And you're not involved is that, further or in deeper or anything, any more than, than this? I, as I said, I was made as the initial contact with different peoples as I was with your group when you first came to Sigurd. And you're saying I you don't know any more than what you're... Nothing. I believe her? Insight check. Could have been a disadvantage. Because I'd totally believe anything she says. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Side note, I just realized our campaigns are weirdly us flirting with our other characters. <laughs> right? Uh... Creepy. <laughs> now it's more obvious. Good job. It's true. I can't deny it. Um, yeah, you. You definitely believe her. Yeah, we'll uh, head down to the pits tomorrow and take a look. Um, but I'll be close by tonight. I'll sleep better. And uh, if there's nothing else you guys want to do, then... Short rest, and then for the three sneaky amigos, go get the staff. Is that what you guys... Is that the plan? Unless we have time for a long rest, but it doesn't sound like it, because things can go down. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll leave it up the belly. Right. It's, it's, his, uh... it's, it's evening, you know. It's his mini-mission. Bellow, then I know how important that stick tree staff is to you. I will go. Well, yeah, if we uh, if we take a short rest, both of you can can heal a bit and I will benefit from it as well and then and then we can we can go for a I think they call it a sneaking mission. Yes. I'll go. So you guys are shown to your rooms. They're literally right next to where the common room is. Apparently after some stern words from one of the house staff uh, arguing with the guards. Apparently the guards kind of resign and show uh, Marisol to her own room next near you guys is, and just keep guard. And one, there's four of them. One guard goes in and like the door is open and the two guard, the other three are outside. I'm going to post up with my back on her door and nod off. All right. So you guys... Get your short rest. If those are taking short rests, your hit dice. You guys have taken a short rest in Count Linnaeus's manor in Sugod. Stonewater Manor. So you've taken your short rest. What are you guys doing? 
Hello. Hello. Is it Halavan or Halavar? Halavar. I'm ready to go when you are. So, I've been thinking about this over the break, and we kind of... We should have talked to uh, uh, drunk Major Domo before he went to bed, but... Um, like, they're guarding the front gates, right? Outside the manor? From yeah, the from what from what you got. There, there's, like, you know, they're guarding the gates. There's men, men on the walls, you know. And the courtyard's on the other side of the gates. So, when you guys were kind of, like, all your weapons were taken, that was the outer gates. Right. Right? And then the, the, that grass pathway up to the outer gates is where you put the tree. Mm. So where's the wall of fire compared to the tree? Uh, you don't know. You actually haven't seen it. Mm. You've seen the smoke and like kind of the, the glow of the flames, but you never actually saw it over the wall. Then I would suggest to both Enil and Poppy that we rely on the uh, hospitality of our hosts and just go up to the gates and get an idea of where it is so we know what we have to do in order to go and get it. Because it might be on the other side of the wall and fire, in which case doesn't matter how much stealth we have, you know, like probably getting through the wall of fire is not going to be a, a thing for tonight. So I, I, I am okay with it, but I, I as a character would do like this is out of character, by the way. So I would do some scouting, usually. I wouldn't do the... I'm not a talker, I guess. Well, Belladin isn't either. He just is like... Uh, he's He feels weird. So he's never been in like a mansion like this before, a manor, and he doesn't know how this all works, but he feels weird like sneaking around when we've been offered like a place. Because if you remember, Anil, when you were like hosted at the swamp like at that point like you had free range you know we were taking care of you but you were a guest and treated fairly and stuff like that so he kind of feels like he's in that position so then mm. turning around and being sneaky and like trying to stealth around this place kind of feels dishonest so he's just like let's just go up to the wall and say hey we want to look over the wall and see what the situation is because at that point if we need to stealth over the wall like it's easier to let them know what we're doing. So if they see somebody out there, they don't just fill us with arrows. Yeah. I never said I was stealthing as you see Poppy take a bite out of a carrot really loudly. Oh. <laughs> okay. I would have stealthed. That was that was what I would have done, but it's it's to get to retrieve your tree. So lead. Okay. So, um, so I imagine the three of us would go in the hallway and then I would look toward the nearest guard and say, do we need an escort, um, to the, the outer gates? We were going to go check to see how the siege is going before, uh, before going and, uh, settling down for the night. Um, we've, uh, received no orders to have to escort you anywhere. Okay, great. Um. I'm a little turned around. This is the biggest building I've ever been in, in my life. Uh, can you just point me which way? Uh, yeah. You, you take that door to the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Then you make a lift. That's it? I just start walking. <laughs> wow, it's it's like a maze. Okay. Okay, thank you. It's a fucking huge building. And yeah. Well, this is definitely the biggest, nicest, and fanciest. Even with the mayhem of the night, this is like the fanciest you've ever <laughs> thing you've ever been to. Yeah, he, he was like shown into his room, and he's like, "What? This is this is oh my god, this is so weird." Like he's so uncomfortable. Okay. Is it is it night? I forget. Sorry. Yes, it is. It is okay. It's probably late so, at night. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably getting around to like okay. one a.m. Mm -hmm. I would say. Mm, okay. So let's uh, let's just go to the uh, the front gates where we came through and and uh, get a get an idea and, and see if there's anybody to talk to. Okay. You guys make your way down 
past the uh, the inner courtyard buildings and then through the the outer courtyard down to the outer gates. Is it um, outdoor? Like, I forget, is there a, a roof over it or is it open? It's open at this point. So could we see, like, fire and smoke? Well, no, there's the outer walls still. Oh, it's not as high as the outer walls. Okay. No. All right. I'll walk up and say, uh... <clears throat> Uh, hello, gentlemen. Anybody in charge here? <sighs> Sergeant Rourke, that way. Walk over to Sergeant Rourke. Rourke. You see a uh, kind of uh, gruff, middle-aged, uh, kind of balding on uh, top of the head, trimmed goatee and mustache. Pretty thick for a half-elf, like muscular, and some... Uh, some chain mail armor kind of barking orders. Uh, good evening, uh, Sergeant uh, Rourke. Uh, well met, as they say. Um, what's the situation out here? And who in the nine hells are you? Oh, right. Right, 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 right. right. Introductions. Shit, I always forget that. Uh, I'm Belladin. Uh, that's uh, Poppy and Anil. We uh, revived... Well, no, our friend revived the Count... And we are his guests for the night because we kind of um, made him not die. Again, Fenwick did that. Um, uh, I, okay, this is weird. I left something outside of the outer gate, and I was wondering if we could uh, go up on the wall and check to make sure it's okay and what the situation is around it. It's the tree. It's the new tree on the other side of the, of the wall. Um uh, it, when when you go up on the wall, do you, arrows get shot at you? Like, what's the situation? What? What's the situation when you go up on the wall? Do arrows get shot at you? Uh, no, there haven't been much arrows uh, past hour or two. Uh, only if you go past the wall, it seems like, into the light. Oh, great, 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 great. Um, do you mind if we go up and take a look? I suppose I um, wasn't told the guests aren't allowed on the wall, I suppose. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, um, I uh, hereby uh, remove any responsibility you have in case I get hurt. I understand that hosts are like supposed to see to the well-being of their guests and make sure no harm comes to them or whatever. I don't know. I've only watched one episode of Game of Thrones. But uh, um, uh, you are not responsible if I get hurt, okay? So don't worry about that. All right. You die. I don't know you. Have fun on the wall. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Belladin uh, dons his uh, his shield. And uh, is there like a battlements? Is there a stairwell? Do I have to climb up a ladder? Uh, yeah, there's a there's a stairwell on the uh, kind of there's this, like you're in the main gate right now, so there's kind of a stairwell on the tower heading up to the. How how tall is the wall? I would say it's a good like 30, 40 feet. Nice, nice, good wall, good wall. Build yeah. the wall, build <laughs> the wall of the north. <laughs> All right, uh, so I I'm climb the wall and uh, I'm gonna take a look out over there and see if I can see my tree. It's, uh, I think it's 60 feet tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me a perception check. Okay. Looking for a 60 foot tall tree. That's tall, right? <laughs> yeah. Please be Pretty good. Tall. Yes. 22. A 60 foot, it's a 60 foot tall tree. And how it's tall are the walls? Yeah, right. So the way that the um, Stonewater ma- Manor is kind of on the hill in Sugod, kind of. Mm-hmm overlooking kind of one of the downstream channels, you know? And that's why you couldn't see it from the inner courtyard. But once you climb the wall and kind of see downslope, it's pretty easy to spot the tree. It is uh, within the boundaries. And this was on the other side of the wall fire, although it's pretty close. Pretty close to the wall fire? Yeah. Um, and with your perception check, you can, um, especially being, you know, you're not an arcane user, but you are from, you know, this is not like an arcane wall of fire that's magically like up things right, from the ground. Right. This is a trench, like a 
uh, not a huge trench, but a, a good enough trench where they can fill it with some kind of oil or yeah, or fl flammable liquid that is lit on fire. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to come back down off the wall. Uh, Sergeant, uh, if someone were to need to go out there to get something, uh, do you guys just open the gate, or is there like a like a porthole or something that I could uh, get through? Uh, you want to go outside the gate? Yes, but I'd be right back. I just need to go get something, and I'll be right back. The 60-foot tree yes um i don't know if you were here earlier when i put it there but i beseeched my uh what did i say what did i say god i beseeched my god and uh and it helped me plant a, a tree there and i'm gonna retrieve it get it retrieve it uh, uh, you have some sort of guests and friends of uh, the count yes like I said earlier um, literally brought him back from the dead when the assassins uh, so someone uh, that I would get uh, my ass handed to me if you got your ass handed to you type of thing well, luckily that is less likely to happen because of uh, I can do magic I guess you yes everyone he can do some magic we we can all do some magic some you know life is magic but mine is a lit uh, more man this talking to people stuff sucks um I I I'll be fine right well if you're dead you don't know my name yep and you don't know mine three dead men coming through the gate and then I <clears throat> as we walk by I'm, I look to Bella Bella and like. I think that would have been easier if we stealthed, but good job, uh, Sergeant. If is there a knock or something when we return? I mean, we can we can see you come back. So right, right. if uh, uh, the enemies were not going to open the gate. Right, 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 right. Just to let your men know they're going to see some weird shit, but um, <laughs> it's normal. Don't worry about it. I'm on my tippy toes. Can't wait. Yep. Cool. 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 All right. Did they open the full gate, or is there like a little door that they? There's a little door they can. Dope. So as soon as we get outside, uh, what's the distance before we're in the light? Like how? What's the 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 distance on the wall of fire? Like the light coming off of it? I mean, towards the towards the wall itself, it gets a little darker because they're obviously not don't have the torches out and stuff right now because they put them all out. And I would say it's probably like. 30 feet to the wall of fire. Okay. And because you didn't, you didn't go super far when you the tree, you know, put it like. No, no, it was yeah. right, right. I just basically walked away from their little check-in table yeah. and did it. So it's not like you guys have to like run a super far distance. You just got to go into the light. Okay. So as soon as the door closed behind us, I'm going to look at Poppy and, and, and Neil and say, so my tribe I don't know if you've met other druids, but we have the ability to change into animal shapes at need. And I don't use this too often. Um, it's kind of a, a last resort type of thing. But I have a form that I saw um, in a jungle that uh, is terrifying to behold, but should allow me to get up to the tree um, without being seen. So please don't attack me when I change. I, I will not be a danger to you. I will still have my normal uh, faculties, if that makes any sense. I spent time with you. I know your weirdness. Nice. I will be okay. As a deadpan emotional email says that to you. <laughs> yeah, deadpan. Okay. Uh, any response from Poppy? She's eating still. <laughs> She's eating well, I remember there was this one. It's not like I've never seen a druid before. So, I mean, I remember this one bad druid, though, that I got to kill well. I think we killed him cold. He had a big frog. Nice. <sighs> and you were going big after frog. a tree. And, uh, the, the, and, and, and I remember he ate the other rogue. That's terrifying. I. Oh, but that was after... Uh, uh, that, but that was after the... Uh, 
the uh, our trusty paladin took out the uh, hobgoblin. Oh, interesting. Captain. Yeah. And then, not to mention that really long fall. Oh. If you guys don't do anything, she's gonna keep rambling. <laughs> so. Belladin nods, noticing that there's no slowing down, and um, <laughs> changes into a Jakuli, which is a large snake. So, as a large snake, I would like to stealth up to the tree. Give me a stealth check. How big? How big is the? How big is it? It's large. I think it's 15 feet long. 15 feet are long. All, okay. Are we all going? Well, you guys don't have to, but if if you want to stealth with me. Yeah, I'm gonna go with just to keep keep tabs. Okay, That's it. I'll stay about twenty feet behind. I will be uh, right behind you. Give me self checks, please. I get a seventeen. Nice. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Hey, right. I made it back. I roll. I rolled crap though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a plus nine. Oh um, wow. Okay. You guys creep your way. One of you slithers the, your way towards the tree. Nothing happened. I was going to say, it's like, pa- I was like, wait, so Poppy thinks she could be more quiet while he's slithering. He, she kind of like grabs onto his tail and kind of like, <laughs> never mind. Okay. <laughs> I, I get within touching range of the tree. We can do that. And uh, and then I use a bonus action to unwild shape, so I'm like standing in the the shadow of the tree because you know uh-huh. it's blocking the fire. And then I turn around to both of them and I say, "Okay, I'm gonna undo the tree. You all might want to go because." Um, Wait a minute, you're you're shape shifted right now, right? No, he I shape shifted back. I, I, oh, I, you changed back. Okay, okay. Yes, it would be weird if the snake was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy's like, what did I eat? <laughs> I thought he said there was no poison in it. <laughs> um, would I would I have seen this trick before? Uh, I've seen you shape change, I'm thinking, but I probably have, have I seen you turn the tree? Like, do I know what's going to happen that I just automatically will disappear? You've probably never seen the tree the the staff before but you saw me change it into a tree okay got it that was at the front gate when before we i've never never while i was got it yep so i'm gonna change this back but as soon as it happens we're gonna be just in the open uh when the fire is gonna uh light us so I don't know if both of you want to maybe make your way now in the shadow of the tree, and then I'm going to change the tree back and then wild shape again and and move away. So that'll be when I'm in the most danger. So it's up to you if you want to move on now or we can all move as a group, but we will be in the open. Um, there'll, be no, there'll be no protection from um, their sight because of the fire. Well, while uh, you're explaining that, I, I do want to take a look out into the fire and see if I can tell if there's like an army out there or is there like what's out there? What can I see past the fire? If I can? Like, do I sense? Do I see danger or sense danger? Ugh. No, it's you. You try to stare. You try to look past the flames, but right, and you kind of mm-hmm. have to shield your eyes, especially in the in like the darkness of the night sky. It's like it's. Could... It's just kind of blinding if you stare at it too long. Oh, yeah. Especially because we're like in the shadow of the tree and yeah. looking out into the bright fire. Not a good not a good view. <clears throat> so when uh, Belladin finishes, I go. I stealth off back. Back to the uh, gate. I'm gone already by the time he finishes his last word. Okay. All right, Poppy. I'll see you back at the gate. Okay. And I start going back. <laughs> All right, both of you give me stealth checks. <laughs> Damn. I rolled a two. We, we, yeah, I rolled a two. We rolled bad. That's incredible. You guys rolled the same. The, the ninja and the monk. Well, I rolled even worse except for... Oh, thank God. One. Uh, does a 20 hit, both of you? Not if I deflect it. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Well, it would still hit you. It still hits, but then you use your... 
reaction my, to like, yeah my reaction yeah. to try to mitigate all right so you both take seven pierce so now you can use your reaction if you'd like yes i would like to uh i don't think uh, you even have to roll because it's the, yeah. the damage dice it's the dice plus your monk level yeah so it's uh reduced by 1d10 plus 11. Oh, ignore that sorry if you reduce damage to zero and have a free hand, you can spend one key point to make a rage attack. But there's nothing I can. At. Do I see where it's coming from? The other like enough that I can. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just can. I just do it. I'm gonna. Can I throw it back into the fire? You can certainly try. Awesome. I want to do that, please. So spend your key point. Yeah. Make a ranged spell attack with a dart at disadvantage. At disadvantage. Okay. I don't even have a dart. Well, no. Add darts, just roll? Add, add darts to your inventory so that because it counts as a dart. When you throw a projectile oh, back, got it. I should always have it, huh? It counts as a dart. So just okay. so you have it in your actions, you know? I should always have it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Dart. Dart, dart, dart. Okay, and I will... And you said disadvantage, right? Yes. Damn. That wasn't a disadvantage. That's just the damage, right? Yeah, you clicked the wrong thing, so... Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, sorry. I have to. I have to equip it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, you do have to equip it. Damn, the advantage would have been great. <laughs> you just hit it, somebody right so into the fire. You, you, you guys suddenly hear when you see arcing over the flames a volley of arrows and. Uh, Poppy easily just with still kind of munching on your snack. Enil, in a f with two fingers, you catch the arrow that was about, and in a flash, you spin around and focus your your key within your body and feel it flow from the cent your center into your arms, and you let the dart fly and it goes flying back into. The oh, that was cool. Into As the fire. As Beladin sees that, he says uh, uh, the druid word and the tree becomes a staff again. He is just standing out in the open. Yep. I will, I will, uh, well, we're already making our way back, so. Oh, yeah, that hits. Two, three, wow. Just the first number. So yep. 20, 11, and 7. So the 20 hits, but the other two do not. 10, Ten piercing damage. So realizing, um, Watching the volley go to hit his companions, who are way stealthier than him, and realizing that uh, he probably won't make it back um, trying to stealth, especially with the fire, he's instead going to use Symbiotic Entity, which is why I accidentally clicked the button up there, which gives me 28 extra HP, and um, and he's just gonna he's just gonna hold a shield over his head and run back to the uh, all right to the wall yeah just gonna take the damage yep so there's time for one more one more volley yep uh Enil and poppy I mean, you guys are what did you guys do we're we're headed back to the gate mm -hmm. so you're were you waiting at the gate no i thought we stealth uh, stealth it up and then uh, Meladin told us to go ahead and go, and we did. At the same time, that he. Yeah. So you uh, you guys are ahead of him. Bang. Are... Oh, did we stay at the gate or did we go inside? Yeah. Uh, I probably would have stayed outside waiting till Meladin made it back. Yeah, I would say we waited outside. All right. I so. Getting shot at then. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I did it. I went to the gate stealthily. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Three. First number. Uh, two of them hit me. Are these uh, at all of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which which ones? Who, uh, which yeah. attacks are against who? Yeah. They're every, it's against all of you. Because it's a volley. Oh, it's a volley. Okay. So I'm going to key. The three of them. Three of them hit. So eleven, six, and ten. Would I have had enough time to use a reaction again, or I have used it up? I would say you got your reaction back by this time. Okay, right. so I can use it against one. Yeah. Okay. That I have only got one point of temp HP left. 
That's good thing you, good thing you did. I'm throwing it back though. Wait, which one am I mitigating? Nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I'm throwing back to eleven one. To disadvantage, disadvantage anyway. So yeah, sixty feet. Another key point. Dart. Oh shit. Maybe. And then the other is sixteen points of damage. Okay. So six points of damage. You hear? I uh, give me a perception check. Because once again, yes, uh, uh, they hear it. You know, like you get you like you get a shoulder in both arrows. Yeah, a shoulder in both arrows, an arrow in both shoulders. Um, <laughs> I just like, had an image of that. <laughs> That's how fast my brain makes pictures. <laughs> yeah, the last one. Once again, you this time instead of um, both your fingers, you actually clap and catch the arrow as it was about to um, pierce your throat, and you spin it in your hands and then throw it back. Give me a perception check. 16. In the distance, past the roar of the fire, you hear a... Ow. I say ow. Belladin, Belladin's running up to the gate because he's got 30 feet of movement. And uh, I think we were 25 feet away because the, the wall of fire was 30 feet or mm-hmm. 20 feet away or whatever it was. Yeah. He runs like up to the gate and he's like why are you all i i thought i okay let's just please get inside <laughs> wait yeah. what did i hear though because you blanked out was it really ow <laughs> <laughs> no i i you heard a a hiccup <laughs> yeah probably got somebody in the throat no <laughs> oh okay i'm like what's his name is out there earl rick has made made his way out there Drunk, drunk Elric. That's awesome. Ow. Yeah, I, I just shepherd everyone inside. Like, come on. I, I thought, okay, please get please get inside so we don't get hit by any more arrows. <laughs> They'll be scurrying. So they, you pound on the door as they open the collie in the main gate. And the sergeant's just kind of staring at you like, did, did you turn into a snake? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um... I'm very in touch with nature. Oh, I'm so over this fucking night. And he just walks off. But you don't have a tree blocking your view. Yeah, okay, bye. Thank you, Sergeant. You're the best. He's 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 like picking the the arrows out of his shield and handing yeah. them to people people at the wall. Here, you want some arrows? Er- uh, arrows. Uh, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy. Sorry, sorry you got sorry. Thank you, Poppy. Thank you, man. I just walk with the arrows still in my shoulder. Our shoulders in my arrows. <laughs> you, have, you have shoulders in your arrows. Oh, you should... Again. <laughs> so we head back to the... Uh, yep. Where, where everybody's at. What are they doing? Is is Beladin, um I'm sorry, is uh, Halvar... Really sleeping? <laughs> I don't know. What is the rest of you guys doing? How far did you really go to bed? Where'd you go? What'd you do? I'm literally leaning, <clears throat> leaning in against the door of the, uh, literally leaning, leaning a little bit against the door of the, uh, the Nightingale while the guards probably just stand <laughs> around me. And I, what you see, man. got my what elbows over my knees and my head on my hands and I'm trying to sleep. You see, uh, you, you, you vaguely see, uh, a bloody poppy walking across with an arrow in her and one of her pigtails. <laughs> um, Belladin thanks everybody and apologizes for the arrows and then um, goes in his room and like sets the staff against the wall, just pleased with himself that he got it back. And then he does what he does every night before he goes to sleep and he uses his druid craft to predict the, what the weather is going to be for tomorrow. I thought you were going to say you were going to take over the world. <laughs> what I do every night, I yes. take over the world. Yes. Plan. Yes. yes I was going to say a, like a routine face wash or something. <laughs> like skincare. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be a golden orb if there's clear skies. A cloud would show up in the center of my room if it was going to be rain. There'd be snow, falling snowflakes if there's going to be snow, stuff like that. So I just want to see what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Cool. Uh, it's clear. All right. So there's like a golden orb shows up there for six seconds. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Belden goes to bed. All 
right. The bed is very nice, and you are very uncomfortable. Yeah, oh. I probably end up sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Goose feather pillows, 300 thread count Egyptian cotton yeah. sheets. So annoyed. Like, how can people do this? What is wrong with people? And then I lay on the carpet and go to sleep. <laughs> you, you aren't sure really what to do with all the pillows. Yeah. All right. So you guys are all taking a long rest. Yeah. Long rest. All right. Thank you. Halbar. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, give me a perception check at the switch. 12? Okay. Um, you don't sleep too well as, you know, Yep. not so much your environment, but more so you're kind of trying to stay on guard. And partway through the night, like, you're kind of half asleep and you hear some rustling and you kind of open your eyes quickly and you, you just see it's one coming from the outside. You cut off what coming from the outside? Uh, a guard. Oh. And dear uh, Roy, I didn't know it was uh, in a half shift. Yeah, sergeant's giving me a little bit of a break from the walls. Your shift's up. He can uh, head back to the barracks. I'll take watch from him. And so one of them shifts out. One, one leaves the room, and then another one goes and sits inside. But other than that... Give him a once-over. Kind of lift my head up over my shoulders and kind of look at him, see what he's wearing, see what he has, see if there's anything that's out of place. Sure, give me a perception check. Regular roll, regular roll. Uh, yeah, the, it's, I mean, you were half asleep still, even though you're trying to stay awake. Yep. But from what you can see, it's just run-of-the-mill guard, nothing out of the ordinary, no special weapons. Long sword and spear. Yep. I would dirty, say he kind of. I would think. Armor. I look at him and he's a little bit scrawny. And doesn't look like he carries his sword very well. Kind of uh, walks, you know, not with confidence. And I put my head back down almost immediately. You guys get your, your long rest. Rest. Yay. You all wake up. Level Level eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> we say it all together yes <laughs> not quite yet not Just there it. yet okay Had this is try. Belladin and Nino this is literally you guys' like third game of the camera <laughs> hey a lot happened alright <laughs> totally we went to a party with like so many people yeah, we had a huge fight and then another huge fight and for the second fight we didn't even have most of our gear I feel like oh, that was know, maybe half Maybe give us half a level. That was funny. Was <laughs> Can we do that? Is there something? Like you got half a level. <laughs> yep. Nothing happens until you nothing, got a whole level. It means nothing with your stats, but you guys got half a level. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I couldn't think that's where we're at anyways. We're at half a level up. But uh, yeah, you guys waken, fresh set of guards, haha -ha bar outside the door. What would you guys like to do? So as uh, I see the sun kind of pouring in through the thin windows of the manor. <laughs> I'll uh, rouse myself awake, stand up and stretch, do my morning routine, you know, touch my toes, reach the ceiling, uh, swing left and right, and uh, smile at the guards, and then knock on the door. The Nightingale door is open? Yeah, they were They were not allowing the door closed. Oh, gotcha. I thought I was leaning against the door. Yeah, I no, no, no. You're late. Uh, yeah, sorry. you were you'd be against like the door frame. Not, not so much the door frame because the guards are in the door frames. There's two guards outside. You'd be probably maybe I'd say the opposite hall, like hallway wall, so you can see inside the room. You know. Mm, gotcha. And then there there's a guard posted inside the room as well. I'd uh, wake up and again touch my toes, touch the ceiling, spin my sli spine left to right, and walk forward and kind of clap the guy on the shoulder. Uh, give him a quick nod and poke my head into the room. Okay, you see, um, like I said, these are all fresh guards. They must have changed before you had woken up. And the Marisol is there, already up, kind of sitting on the chair, just kind of like looking out the window on the other side. They killed her just like Vesta Ragna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? Her bed what covered in blood and red eyes tattoo. Oh, Good morning. Yeah. Breakfast? I'm sure you guys won't mind. You can even have some of my breakfast. Uh, I mean, do you, 
they had dinner last night, right? Yeah, that's what I heard. I, I, I would love some breakfast. All right, let's go. And um, she she kind of walks walks towards you and kind of grabs your arm and puts her arm right, like inside of yours. Let's go. Go, gents. And I look back over my shoulder, kind of give a cocky smile, you know, the half curled lip upward in uh, the main hall common room wherever I assume they have breakfast in the manor because this is the first manor I've ever been to. Well, second manor because I escaped the first one. <laughs> Let's not talk about the other manor. Yeah. So you guys walk back and then one of the um, servants kind of motions you back towards the common room again and says, uh, your breakfast has been arranged for. Uh, his lordship re- requests your presence after meal. He's not going to be joining us for the meal? I'm sorry, my my lords and uh, ladies. Um, the count uh, has taken his meal. Um, oh, no, no, no. I'm, you misunderstood. I'm not upset. I'm pleased. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Is there a time limit? I mean, if I, our I, breakfast I, I, lasts I, for four hours, I mean, we'll see him in four and a half hours, right? <clears throat> Mm. I, I was I was not specifically uh, told the time frame, but um, I, I I shall inform his lordship um, of your pro- projected time. Um, Th- does that mean they won't charge us after we eat for longer an hour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you guys have any leftovers, they charge. We will have to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And you guys can't eat just the meat. You have to eat the rice too. <laughs> But you guys are brought breakfast. It's a lot of pastries and breads, um, porridges um, sweetened with honey and dried fruits. Oh, too um, much carbs. <clears throat> there is a lot of grain-based foods that you know. I'm gonna breakfast. eat all the sausages and pasta I can because I work out like <laughs> six hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, Look at Fenswick. How'd y'all sleep? Like a rock. Yeah, me too. A little warmer than I'd like it, but comfortable. I I had a little bit of trouble sleeping. It's <laughs> I've uh, there wasn't much privacy in that room. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I mean, do you normally have trouble sleeping? Uh, our shaman, or my uncle, at least he. Uh, uh, the spirit sight, whatever he called it, uh, back to the tribe and keep him from sleeping for hours on end. And then he would sleep for like two days straight. I mean, you're not my uncle, thank goodness. But uh, anything like that? I would hope I'm not your uncle. No, just I I needed a, a moment of privacy um, uh, in the middle of the night. But um they at least let me close the door for a moment. The guard wouldn't leave, though. <clears throat> she kind of looks, so, turns away, <laughs> embarrassed. People up north do this every day. It's it's just nature, you know. I mean, do your thing. It was kind of a ritual for my friend. We would. Uh, <laughs> he turns a little red. Uh, my uncles and brothers would make. Um, Designs, and then uh, us youngsters would have to create uh. snow snowmen, you know. And he gestures like the small or middle or, you you know what I mean. That is positively horrifying and delightful. I hope I can meet them one day. Delightful. <laughs> Maybe one day. Crestfallen, and she says that. And she just kind of goes and eats her uh, breakfast in silence unless someone talks to her. I stare at her. She definitely, like, <laughs> like <laughs> starts, like, just, like, face into her food, like. <laughs> cool. And Neil's going to be fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah, I already know. Uh, I think but, it would have been better 
that uh, Baladin did that. Uh, <laughs> no, we, yeah, around. We... Here's the thing. Baladin's been around people. He just doesn't understand, like, social etiquette in cities and society, but he's been around other people. He knows how to treat people individually, which is you why... You were around furballs. What's his face? Yeah, but also he... On his way here, he met people on the road and spoke to people and, like, helped people in villages. Like, that's how he earned his money, was, like, helping people here and there. So, like... And you do have a pretty high insight, so... Yeah, yeah. That's why That's why when the guy was like, hey, he's got royal blood, he's like, oh, you fucking hate the guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's just minding his own business. He feels weird about turning into a snake in front of you guys last night. Even though nobody's commented on it, so that's cool. We, we yeah, you you notice weirdness. that no matter, like, no one thing you do notice about Poppy is that no matter how weird stuff gets, her attitude is always the same. It's upbeat, and she usually she and you notice that she no when something weird happens, she doesn't usually make any weird comments or anything like that. Is she more like nonchalant? about things or like whatever do you do you no no she's more happy go lucky and just always oh, okay. positive yeah well, I wouldn't say positive but she's always uh, she always tries to see the 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 better side of it the more humorous side of things or Got it. et cetera et cetera and 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 because I, I guess you guys don't know this she tends to tell a lot of tall tales Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys got just a taste of it last night. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything you guys would like to do or discuss over breakfast? Want to stare at the nightingale? <laughs> I'm gonna lean over and, and it's, okay. I'm gonna lean over and it's filled of you, like in between with my big head. <laughs> kind of, you see the camera staring at the nightingale. She's got her head down in the food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You send you look back and and he like staring daggers. <laughs> you see how his head kind of slide over from an angle. <laughs> okay, other than Anil being weird, I'm sorry, a creeper. creeper. Um, what's uh, what's the character's name in uh, Breakfast Club? Yeah, like her exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, 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 I forget. He, 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 what's her name? Katie. Katie, yeah. Well, uh, what's is is Anil male or female? I forget. He's female. Anil is female. Yeah. Okay, I, I was gonna say because this entire time I thought it was female. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Neil is female. definitely a female. I'm still a creeper. <laughs> still a creeper. But Whereas Belladin doesn't know social etiquette, but he can pick up on insight. She just does not. What do you? Belladin is Belladin is like the lovable. Awkward buffoon. Yeah. yeah. While Anil is like the, like creepy. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. Like, please don't make a voodoo doll of my family. Like. Yeah. No, I was gonna say that's that's kind of funny because that's like completely opposite, opposite of Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we are sisters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are sisters. <laughs> and, and Neil will eventually feel like something. Uh, tap her in the leg and then um, because he's going to use the staff to just kind of nudge her to get her attention. Pissed off, like, yeah. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Like, give you a face like, what are you doing? Why? What? What are you? Okay, and I, yeah. I shake out of it. I pretend to eat again. I'll look down. Are there okay. any guards right. in the room? Um, yeah, the guards, like I said, different set of guards, yeah. but they are posted at there. The There's same spots where they were. Four, right? What? Mm-hmm. Oh, there. Now I imagine. Now I imagine that, that you said that you start eating. You're still staring at her while you're feeding yourself. Oh, not totally. It's totally like the uh, the creeper stare, like spoon, like not even looking at the food, just not breaking eye contact. Yeah, like, uh, it's yeah. not even making contact. But I'm sorry. as soon as Belladon sees that, he's gonna nudge her again. Like, <laughs> stop! What are you doing? Okay, I'll look away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Poor Nightingale. We just found she's out. She's still not looking at her food, though. Now she's just looking at like a random direction at the wall. Like, <laughs> no, Yo, I'm uh, looking at where I'm looking at where I got tapped by the the staff. Yeah. I'm just looking down there now. 
And if that's the opposite of Poppy, then right now Poppy is like her, her head's buried in her plate. <laughs> Just eating. She. I don't think you have not. You have stopped eating this whole time. I love that you guys are mirrors. <laughs> Okay, so how long? Just the awkward person in the middle, like, <laughs> what is, what? Is, oh my god. <laughs> What's Bedwig uh, doing? You there, oh guard? God. Yeah, what is Bedwig doing? <laughs> what is the word from the outer wall? Oh, we got attacked yesterday. Uh, well, uh, last I heard, um, fires were still raging. Uh, hasn't been on it, hasn't been any. Main attacks on the wall itself. Uh, no one's ventured out to, except to get some tree. And he kind of looks over in your group. Can I still have an arrow in my shoulder and like, Jesus, pull it out and be like, do you yeah. recognize these sho- these arrows? <laughs> these we got attacked shoulders. yesterday. Do you recognize well, these shoulders? Reaches a yanks one out of his shoulder. Uh, yeah, uh, I just want to like, I went to oh sleep with shit. it. In my shoulder still. <laughs> that's that's Eno's way of flirting with someone. Do you that's, recognize your shoulders? That's that's how that, that's why Beladin's been tapping him. He's been trying to be like, dude, take the arrow out of your oh, shoulder. Sorry, what is yeah. wrong with you? I forgot. <clears throat> do you recognize these? We were attacked. Do you recognize the arrows? Yeah, like do they do they have special markings on them or are they just regular arrows? Give me a perception check. If this arrow was found, please return to. Yeah, did yeah. it have a note? Did it have a note? Like someone's That's signature. Right. These these are my favorite arrows. Please return them at your earliest convenience. Oh, no, wait. I was playing with my love horse. Really? Hold on. I was, like, like, I was hoping like, you were going to get like, the next level. Yeah. Like this arrow? Buy more at. Buy more at, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, you said perception? Yeah. It's just but a I, I wasn't looking at the arrows. I was asking the soldier. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just in my shoulder. So you literally just pulled out an arrow from your shoulder, went up to the guard, and said, yeah. do you recognize this? Yes. That, that, feels, I put like, my... that feels like <laughs> 1d4 crying. damage. Like 1d4 uh, at least. Uh, I'll take it. You know what? Yeah, you healed. You spent the night with an arrow in your shoulder. So you got to pull it out. You take three Good. points of damage. Good okay. thing you don't toss and turn at night. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't even know if I sleep. So he looks down at you horrified as you are now kind of bleeding as you're holding this bloody arrow about his waist, you know, just a little bit over his waist height as you're like shoving it up, arms all the way outstretched, like point to his face, blood dripping down. No, no. What is wrong with you? All right. I'm just okay. Try to help. And I'll go back to uh, breakfast. You know what? You know, you know what happened? You went, okay, trying to help, and then you stuck the arrow back, back in your shoulder. In my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> they take another back. three damage. Yeah, and then you know what? No, I it. won't give you any. No, you do not <laughs> shove the arrow back. <laughs> at that point, Elric, literally at that point, as you're like pointing the arrow at the guy, like El- Elric walks up. My apologies, friends. And you can see he's got bags under his eyes. Like he's. It's been a rough morning. Um, does he look? Uh, does he look hungover? Give me an insight check. That's right, he was drinking. He was throwing him back. <laughs> you could be just, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not even gonna make your roll. He's hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely hungover, and probably just got chewed out. He um, looks. He if he looks over at Belladin, Belladin's just giving him two thumbs up. <sighs> he, he saw a kid do that on the road and he thinks hey you're still alive yeah. uh, it appears that I am I am unfortunately have to interrupt whatever this is um, breakfast <clears throat> just looking at it Neil like with the bloody arrow but uh, the count is not willing to wait any longer uh, and requests well you are you are uh, your presence is um Requested. needed in the, the main hall cool you know why don't you take a break you don't need to talk to us would you like some water <laughs> his, his shoulders just as he's just like the the the, the air of decorum like around him just like yeah. completely like deflates and he just grabs the water sits in one of the chairs and just leans back yeah just just 
Take a moment. I can tell you're under a lot of pressure, stress. Yes, yeah, stress. And then, and then we can go see his royal pain in the assness. But I say that quite. I don't. I say that to him. <laughs> yeah. Not so the guards here. I, I, I would appreciate it if um, I, uh, I may have had a bit too much to drink last night mm-hmm. and said some things. That were out of line. Oh no, you you just drank. You didn't even talk last night. It was kind of weird. It was rude of you, actually. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Benswick, um, that diamond. Uh, it was a thousand gold, correct? <clears throat> Why, yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yes, Delia, make that correction, please, for the treasury. <clears throat> Take your time. It costs then, more uh, to bring back royalty, you know. <laughs> we can go when you're ready. All right. So you guys, do you want to do something, Poppy? No, but if if the right before we leave, we leave, but not without Poppy taking a few extra extra snacks with her and carries it. She <laughs> kind of like carries it in her arm <laughs> as she eats. <laughs> Poppy, Poppy kind of seems like the person who has like baggies in their pockets and just puts the food in their pockets. Yeah, <laughs> you have tots in your pockets. <laughs> Definitely, pocket tots, pocket tots. Yeah. What you guys don't know, Poppy has been dumping everything out of the bag of holes, filling it's it just with food. food. Yeah, it's just food. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> the trail of good items. I got super confused for a second because I looked at the screen and I read Poppy and then I saw a guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. Is like I got confused too. That's why I just have names at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so you guys make your way to the hall. You know, it is lined with guards. A little more than last night. You think that security's been bumped up a little bit. And there, sitting on chair slash throne. He calls it a throne. It's not a throne. Raised up on him in the die base is Count Linnaeus. Either side is Captain Murden and Commander Ian of the City Watch. Murden? Murden. M-E-R-D-N. Ah, well. I hope you all enjoyed your breakfast. Puppy nods with a full mouth. <sighs> Good morning, Count. How are you feeling? Well, my party was ruined. My manor is surrounded. I have no idea what's happening to my city. My prison is under siege. And we are good. We are happy to see that. And then he takes a step back and looks at uh, at Halbar because that's the extent of his social interaction for today. Well, we were thinking of heading out to the uh, prison area. Do you have a way to get out of here without climbing these walls that are on fire? You are going to the prison area. For what? Are yeah, asking, when did we decide this? Are you asking why? Are you volunteering to, what, bring back the magistrate? Look at Fentwick. Look well, at as the count. Uh, wait, as the, as the count so clearly pointed out yesterday, we are mercenaries. Of course, you want to pay. Mm. Well, oh. we are sell swords. We sell our swords. We don't give them away. Mm. And, and staff. I don't. I don't have a sword. Let's see. There's the sword is more metaphorical sometimes. Oh right, 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 right. It's the One, service we're selling. Two, three. Very well. Five hundred gold for your services. Would that be collectively or each? <laughs> each. <laughs> oh, I'm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, probably seen in most of your lives. Could have been more gold than you would have have seen for the rest of your life. Could have been. Give me a persuasion check. Yeah. Nice. 300 gold each. I mean, am I right? Benthwick, am I right? You see... You're right. See, hmm. You see Pop... You see Poppy, uh... Uh, briefly look into the bag of holding and then turns to, to turns to turns to you guys and kind of like with her mouth over over her uh, I mean her hand over her mouth so the count doesn't see and she's clearly saying there's much more than that in our <laughs> in our bag of holding Belladin is just kind of looking confused like 
Is that a lot of money? Should I be impressed? I don't... I don't know. More than zero. <coughs> mm. It's more than 500 for all of us. I might Fine. add that... Mm. The Nightingale here... Cannot... Stories cannot be corroborated nor made legally valid without the presence of the Magistrate. So find the Magistrate, bring them back. Uh, you came to me saying you're going to the prison, so if that's what you wish, then yes, that is what I require. Fine. What do they look like? Ah, she's an elven woman. Reddish hair. Quite a bit of freckles on her cheeks. Uh, stern face. I think that should describe her well. Uh, look for the ones, look for the people who aren't filthy thug prisoners, and they should be able to point you to her. Her name is Magistrate Philia Faust. Philia what? Faust. I'm sorry, Count, you need to fix your mic. Philia Faust. Okay, that came, that came through perfectly. Thank you. Thank you, Count. Philia Faust. You still haven't gotten a new mic yet, have you? You, by the way, you do Rick, really. You do. Uh, I don't think it's my mic. I think it's the USB connections. Uh, as soon as I get, I have a new mic ooh. on back order. As soon as I get it, I'm going to drop this one off of you along with the other <laughs> books. Soon, TM. Don't you have like a karaoke mic you can plug in? Magic mic. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? You want, I can get that cool echo going. Yes. Okay, everybody, this one's my favorite song here. Okay, quiet, <laughs> quiet down, huh? Quiet down. I would sing to you. Wow. You guys Does are anyone amazing. Do <laughs> I was just yeah. oh, in the Living on the prayer. Oh, living on the prayer. You're so good at that. <laughs> it's too much. That was really good. We should have D&D karaoke night. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> I, 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 I become... Full Filipino, not just half Filipino. You break out the you can't yeah. when, when the karaoke yep. comes right. out. And you, and you Real, know you would start off with a journey song. Real question. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a karaoke machine in your house? Not a machine. I had a, so the thing magic that mic. Filipino house it's called a magic mic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which just was the, the OG. Boy. The OG magic Boy mic. All right. From South Detroit. Be before Channing Tatum. So oh. it's like this. It's it's like a it's like a microphone, yeah. like a, a bunch of songs programmed into it. You just hook up through like a USB or a the audio the audio audio oh yeah wire yeah. I think the new one's probably our HDMI, but yep. I used to have the laser disc. Well, I oh. grew up with it. My my dad had it. Yeah. Anyway, back to the yeah. game. Back to <laughs> I, sorry. I thought this was the new game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys ruined my boss fight. You guys are going to have to sing. Oh, what? Why? How did we ruin your boss fight? Nobody died. Yeah. Oh. You gave away the secret. You guys are going to fight Scanlan. So, well, is there... I usually don't deal with uh, your types. Is... What do you mean, do we... you people? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um... So is there is there a way out of here? Because we're surrounded, right? Commander, is there a way out of here? Uh, there's one way. An old old connection through the sewers that was uh, used by the old to make discreet trips to question unsavory prisoners in the stone pits. Uh, it hasn't been used in at least two generations, um, so I can't say for its integrity, but better than going through a hailstorm of arrows and a wall of fire. Mm. Really, you don't keep an escape route for the, <clears throat> for the Count? You know, just for this sort of emergency? Yes, you don't keep an escape route <laughs> for the Count? <laughs> It, it it was never a concern before, my lord. Sugod has known peace for generations. Um, I, 
it has happened now, so I f- say you fixed it quickly. Of of course, my l- Well, it's settled then. 300 gold each for the return of the Magister from the Stone Pits. And then we can commence the proceedings on the situation and stories surrounding the attack on my life. Where's Elric? Um, I'm not sure where Elric oh. is, but Elric is... <laughs> not here. He what well, can't find Erlich, his brother Elric usually takes his place. <laughs> I thought he followed us back in. I thought we were waiting until he got his drinks of water and then he was gonna come with us. He has not shown up. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. He he gave us your message and, and we came as quick as we as we got it. And Commander Ian, I want word sent. I want Sir Giles found. I want to hear him answer for the accusation against him. What accusation? His name was mentioned by Metasol here. He was not able to be found. And let's just say that the method of payment for these would-be assassins is quite unique. We'll hear his story, your stories, accounts from witnesses, and the magistrate will decide, and any other evidence presented. Now, if there's nothing else, I have a crowd of whining lessons that they're in, out in my courtyard. Excuse me. Command, uh, Captain, the seat to their needs, Commander. Paladin's going to lean over to the group and say, What evidence? What, like, proof. Okay. Proof. Proof of what? Like, wh- why? What? I don't. Against, uh, Hal's girlfriend? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say girlfriend. Who? What are we getting evidence against? Like, we know who the bad guy is. He was a part of the attack. Why don't we just take him out? When, when, uh, when there's a beast killing your flock, you don't gain evidence and and prove that the beast did it. You kill the beast, so it doesn't kill any more of your flock. I think we have to find the beast. beast. And perhaps this is the first breadcrumb on the trail. Besides, the fool's willing to pay us a lot of gold for this. And I point at Fenthwick and I say, yes, he's correct, too. I've never had much use for gold, but sure. I mean, let's go. Let's do this, as they say. Woods through the darkness and the shadows, it's a nightmare. Oh, no. I thought it wasn't karaoke night. <laughs> no, we started a monster. That's just how it works. I'm a I'm a Disney kid. What can I say? Um, you start singing something. You're Disney and Filipino. <laughs> right. Double trouble. Double trouble. Yeah. So, you guys, our group of adventurers, have decided to volunteer and make their way underneath the city to the prison of the stone pits near the quarry on the northeastern side of the city of Sugod to retrieve the magistrate and help prove their friends and maybe more than friend uh, <laughs> met us all, the Blue Nightingale's innocence um, and help unravel the mystery on the assassination of the Count Linnaeus. 